Oh, yeah, yeah. Everybody's doing well. Got a snowstorm where I am going, where I am, and uh, Super Chicken is in a deep freeze. So. <laughs> Excited to uh, get rock and rolling here, or what, man? Yeah, yeah, it should be a good tournament. Um, yeah, lots of, at least in the participant list on Battle 5, there's a lot of EU players that I do recognize. Um, after, actually, let me see who checked in, because there were... Quite a few people that... I, oh, yeah. So, yeah, we have... I mean, people from THL. There's Rebobson, Chewy. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe Lasagna is also here. Yeah, uh, he's he's checked in as well. Um, do we know who we're covering for the first match? We don't, but um, I'm happy to, to add anybody you guys want to see the first time. And then after that, we're just going to... Do it and on the fly, whoever's available um, per brackets. That's that's generally the, the first match is usually the hardest to kind of get organized from a tournament's perspective. But um, yeah, so we can pick whoever we need the first time around, and then we'll just as the match is finished, we can just go round by round. So, all right, I am back. I just started the bracket, and I'm gonna hit up. How do you guys feel about uh, specking lasagna? Yeah, sure, let's go for it. Yeah. All right, let me just message him. So Lasagna is going up against... It's like he's against Assassin. Oh, there we go. Round one. So we need to add them. Be a little bit of a trial and error for a quick few minutes, folks, but... Your professionals at our at our trade, right? Maybe very professional. Very <laughs> We're all professional here. Okay, Lasagna, who's going to be um, at the top of your screen, and, and Assassins at the bottom of the screen. As soon as I get things rock, rock and rolling. Okay. Side of things. Marty, you know anything about lasagna? Besides, yeah, he's <laughs> well. Uh, he's a Finnish player who was well known in Wild and just got into some Masters Tour stuff and qualified recently. He's been tearing up the standard ladder since. Uh, he's also been in THL for a few seasons now, so pretty well known in the community. And this. It's exciting to see him in his native server. So we'll see how that goes. Okay. I just yeah. got Lasagna and Assassin is at me, so... Yeah, just another wild player putting standard players out of a job. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> tread lightly. <laughs> so true. Yeah, I mean, he's rank 8 legend in, in Wild right now on EU. But, uh, yeah, he's also a, a really talented standard player as well. So I'm sure he's going to do quite well today. And then I'm sure I'm going to eat my words when he loses in round one. Does on you bring in Shaman, Hunter, and Priest. Yeah, it looks like it's the uh, Burn Shaman. So looking kind of like a, definitely a bit of a aggro strategy here. With the uh, the face. You've been in a few tournaments oh, actually, yourself. It's, it's, a, it's actually a quest hunter. Oh. That's interesting. Yeah, Lasagna's been messing around with a quest hunter lately. Uh, he brought it to, or he was on it, he was playing it on ladder last few days, and won a lot more games than he expected. 
So he figured, let's have some fun, bring this to a tournament, and see how it does. Yeah, it definitely so. seems a lot stronger post-patch. I think Poison Rogue and Mozaki Mage were pretty tough matchups for the, the Hunter. And I think I think it lines up pretty well into into both popular Shaman decks right now. So I think we could see a lot of success for this quest hunter. Yep. Uh, should we give him the go-ahead, by the way? Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. Just, I just had to get the uh, the stuff on screen, so I'll see if I can find Assassin online there. Yeah, I'm personally a big fan of Quest Hunter. I, I was kind of sad that it fell out of the meta a little bit in uh, in the last expansion. So I, I do hope it does uh, fairly well today. We'll just have to see. Alright, they were given the go-ahead, so once they queue up, we'll get right in the game. Messaging the players, making sure there's a spec check. There we go. Yeah. So Assassin's going to be at the bottom of the screen for our viewers, with uh, Lasagna being at the top. So. Let the hunt begin. Yeah, it looks like we have the quest hunter going up against the face hunter. I think uh, his, historically this has been a pretty good match for Face Hunter, mainly because uh, they can get on a bit of early pressure and get a bit of chip damage in, but a lot of it has to do with just um, Quest Hunter not having any sort of healing in their deck, and Face Hunter just kind of going over the top a lot of the time. I mean, a really, really strong start for Lasagna here. Kind of getting the exact pieces of removal he's looking for. Like you were saying, though, uh, the Hunter really just, or the Face Hunter at least, gets the chip damage in early. Uh, that burn usually puts them over the top in this matchup. Yeah. Although Quest Hunter... Oh yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. I'm just I'm curious to see like what a uh, assassin's plan is here because I think even at, at this early stage you might consider like prioritizing going for a hero power every turn. Wow, <laughs> that is that is another very strong top pick. Yeah, I mean, getting down to your zero mana hero power by turn four is certainly what you're looking for. Um, we'll have either Spring the Trap or Kaelin for next turn as well. Hungry, aren't ya? I know two. Lasagna only runs one secret in the deck, Explosive Trap. So he doesn't really care about the honorable kill from Spring the Trap. Yeah, I've seen kind of different lists of quest hunters. Some running like uh, the the was it Dunbalder bunker with like multiple uh, hunter secrets. You know, like the freezing tramp and the ice trap. But um, it it the list kind of did end up being a little bit clunky with with those quest or sorry with those secrets not really progressing your quest at all. Right, they were always terrible top decks. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, especially drawing them is just so bad for you. Um, but yeah, Assassin getting some base damage in here uh, after Lasagna opted not to kill the Wrangler. 
but it does let him play Tavish uh, here on, well, almost on curve, but he is going to be able to play Tavish and kill the Wrangler here. Um, and he's still at 20 health. So definitely in a really, really strong spot here. Yeah, I think it's mainly going to be a question of how good Lasagna's next couple of top decks are. Because Assassin does almost have enough damage just in his hand to kill Lasagna over a couple of turns. Lani's in a really good spot here. There's going to be a lot of damage from Assassin's side. But I don't know yeah. if it's going to be enough to really get there. Yeah. Uh, I think this is... So he's able to get 9 damage in here. I think you actually... You probably even hold this wound right here just out of risk of uh, piercing shot killing you. I would agree. Probably. Well, Assassin's gonna draw here, but I don't think there's a draw that would have saved him. And yeah, that's gonna do it. Lasagna takes game one. Yeah, I mean, even with uh, such a strong start for the quest hunter getting. Uh, tons of removal pieces. It still ended up being quite close in terms of uh, in terms of health totals. With the hunter, I mean, nearly getting there. If the bands were mentioned or not, but can't recall if we did. So, shaman's band for Lasagna and. Uh, how to was banned for assassin. Light makes right. Mine is the only way. Job done. Yeah, and now we're seeing the, the Handlock versus Miracle Priest here. Um, I've only played this matchup a couple of times, and it was all from the, the Warlock side. I definitely felt that it seemed like it was favored for the Warlock, but I think there there's definitely uh, a lot of play from the Priest side, especially if you're able to get a, a huge Nazmani off early, then... A lot of the times the Warlock just doesn't have an answer, because things are just out of health range. Is, is Lasagna, or is Priest usually a, a good bring for, for tournament format? I mean, this particular... One where we have a patch that just kicked on uh, Tuesday, so people are still easy yeah, I think into that. Priest is definitely one of the classes that's been experimented with a lot since the patch. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, Miracle Priest being one of the decks uh, that's getting yeah, tested a lot. Um, I think, yeah, Rogue and Mage were definitely really terrible matchups for, for Priest beforehand. So I think it, it does fit a lot better into the meta now. Uh, but this this showstopper in Warlock is really going to be impactful here, I think. Just going to probably nullify a lot of uh, the kind of pop-off turns that the Priest is going to go for. Mm -hmm. Aside from 
you know, a, a psyche split on on Malagos. Uh, I think this showstopper is going to nullify most of the, the stats on board that Chris is going to be able to gain. More bones to go on! More bones to go on! The big five fours on the board. <laughs> Yeah, we are going to see a Nazmani turn here. I think the one issue here for for Lasagna is that there's there's no Malagos in hand, so mm -hmm. he's not able to kind of refill the hand. He definitely he has the Draconis study, so we can look for it through that. Um, but if he doesn't find Malagos off of that, I think he's going to be in a bit of a tough spot. Yeah. Well, I'm not, not going to say Soul Rain's going to help, but it'll get rid of some of the... He does pick up the Ystera, which is probably the second best option. Yeah. He can play it here, uh, and also play the, uh, the Desperate Prayer to discount those cards in hand. Yeah, unfortunately for Assassin, he doesn't have a, a way to activate this showstopper aside from the soul rend. Yeah. So it is going to get a little... He's going to take quite a bit of damage on the backswing here. But he will stay alive. Alright, I'm so sorry. That's I was good. dealing with administrative issues, but now I'm back in the meantime. I've been hard carrying Super Chicken, you know. What I did. As usual. Of course. That's <laughs> what Canadians do. Is there trouble? Looking at this though. I definitely like this Shadow Word Devour play. I think you're you're definitely worried about a second soul run coming down, so just putting more health on the mini that isn't gonna die is probably a good idea. I like this a lot as well. Burning seven cards, though? Does that matter? Um, six cards, my bad. I, I'm not sure how impactful it is in this matchup. Um, he's actually gonna... Well, he is actually gonna burn seven. He's so gonna kill off the Astera as well. It's like, I'm not sure how impactful it is in this matchup. I think it depends on if Lasagna is able to get a, a refill here on the board. And right now, obviously, he isn't able to. I want to say the cards being burned don't matter, because all you really care about against this priest is keeping the board cleared as long as you can answer their threats, because they only have one or two threatening boards. If you can answer that, then you're likely to get through to the end. It's going to take a while for Lasagna to come back now. Let's get his rebuild his legacy. Yeah, I think, I mean, that is kind of one of the issues with Miracle Priest, where if your first board gets cleared, you are in a, quite a tough spot. They definitely struggle to kind of regain the board a lot of the time. Not a lot of proactive stuff to do here for Assassin. Turn it into a one-one battle. 
Yeah, now we have Game 3, Miracle Priest versus Space Hunter. Alright, just kind of taking a quick refresh to see who's winning matches, so quite a few. Quite a few are already completed. Bracket four, we get Hilbert moving on with a 3 0 win. <laughs> Epiconus is on, is on to the next round. Right. Yeah, looks like uh, Rebob is moving on as well. Yes, Rebob got through after a no show, actually. Oh, okay. Which is a bit unfortunate. So, maybe so that's we're a... working that out right now. Yeah. I'll, I'll queue that up. Uh, is Rebobson playing right now, or is he just... Uh, he should be playing, yes. Yeah. Well, it looks like a decent start for both sides here. Um, the Cult Neophyte is probably one of the more impactful cards in this matchup, along with, you know, the Trog. I'm uh, just kind of kind of negating a lot of the priest's early turns. And the Trog also gets picked up here for the Hunter. So, Arzania definitely in a bit of a tough spot, not being able to really uh, look for any value through the Renew or anything, at risk mm -hmm. of just generating way too many Trogs. Oh, he does pick up the 1 in 3 Zyrella, though, off the... Ren uh, off the uh, inside. Yeah, I think if that was a Nazmani there, we might have just seen the game end on the spot. Guys, you suck here. Like lasagna is finally getting some damage in. Yeah, I th that was a bit of an interesting. For me, that was a bit of an interesting play last turn by Assassin. I was surprised he didn't just go for the hero power wolf retainer. Um. I, I was wondering if he was maybe trying to save the Wolf Retainer for a Piercing Shot, but it looks like he's just playing it this turn. Uh, so he did sort of just miss a Hero Powered last turn. Hey, with this though, do we think Lasagna attacks here? Choose to hold. Makes sense. There's no need to go in. You know, freezing trap is likely. We can play around it here. Uh, yeah, I'm a little surprised that Assassin didn't attack into the uh, into the one four with the weapon to to kill it off with the rhino. He would he would have missed uh, was it one damage base, but also would have prevented the seven eight from staying on board. Oh, I can see. 
Right, and looks like that cost them the game, too. There you have it. Yeah. Lasagna moving on. Yeah, the, the, the one and three insight into Zyrella really, I mean, just completely turned the game on its head there. I think if he didn't hit the Zyrella, the game would have just been over. But he did pick it up, and he is moving on to the second round. Uh, okay, so do we know which match we're covering next? Was it Rebob's match? Yes! Rebob's okay. versus Worry. Yeah, so it looks like in this match it was handlocks banned on both sides. We have a beast root from Rebob versus a uh, looks like a quest rogue from Worry. Yes. Yeah, this the scavenge will definitely help stave off the pressure, but a lot of I think he's just gonna be able to replay his entire hand here. A little bit behind, I'm adding Bobson and his yeah. opponent as we speak. Looks like game one's gonna end fairly soon. And yeah, Mr. Smite coming out from Worry is going to close out the game here. Uh, 
Oh, that'll do it. Spike coming in clutch for game one. So next up, what do we have? Looks like it's the Quest Shaman from Rebob versus also the Quest Shaman from Worry. Um, I guess notably the main difference in the decks is that Worry has uh, Brucon of the Elements, whereas Rebob does not. I remember... Brucon was mostly a rogue tech, right? For Thief Rogue? Yeah, um, I've definitely cut it in, in my list since since the patch. Uh, I, I tried it a little bit post-patch, and it did not really feel good to me. Um, I think most people I know have also opted to cut it. So I think, um, yeah, it's, it d- definitely did not feel that impactful, on, uh, from my testing at least. Very straightforward start here. Repo loading one mana saved the lightning bolt. Yeah, I don't think there's uh, really a great play you want that he wants to bloom into right now. Um, I now there is. <laughs> uh, the Spogger off the top, definitely a much more appealing play here, I think. I like this as well. Yeah, if he really wants to, he can even play with the lightning bolt on the minion. This keeps the slogger at more health. Which means Worry has to use two spells to remove it. Uh, yeah, these guidance pickups are not not great here for Rebob. No, oh, and the only thing that Rebob can use to corrupt that dunk tank is Brucon himself. So it's going to be sitting in hand for a while before it sees any use. Yeah, post Brucon, it's pretty good, but yeah, now where he's a decent bit ahead on his quest progression, getting second stage completed there. Um, and no overload cards in Rebob's hand to progress the quest. You have to imagine a charge call is ripped here. Yeah, this claw machine uh, will pull on multicaster here if he went for it. But now just going to go for the stats on board with Mr. Smite. Yeah, it's not ideal because we haven't really played many spells, or spell schools, I should say. I believe we've only seen nature spells from Rebob's side, so it's not like it's going to draw very much. Wow, that is... Okay, that's probably the best pickup you could have gotten there. <laughs> I'll clear the board. Off the top. There's off board, progresses quest. It is going to overload him a decent bit, but he's going to be able to trade in with the Canal Slogger first, so he's going to... The Perpetual Flame's on, only going to overload him for two as opposed to three. Yeah, I like this a lot. Saves him some mana. Also heals him a bit. Yeah, I mean, if he wants to, he can keep playing for tempo next turn with Charged Call, or he could just uh, play it a bit slower and go for a Tidal Surge. There is also the Vivid Spores option, which it seems like he's looking at. I like the Vivid Spores here. Let some value trade. Makes the Canal Slogger very sticky. And he doesn't float mana.
Yeah, now Wordy's just one overload card off completing the quest, and he picks it up off the the primordial studies here with the novice zapper. And that sets up worry for Brucon next turn. Uh, yeah, Re Rewob as well can, can get Brucon down next turn if he wants to. Uh, with the Zapper and Perpetual Flame play this turn. We'll overload him for three, so we'll have uh, six mana next turn. Not ideal. Yeah, you won't be able to play anything complete. with the Brucon, but I also don't really see another line to take. No. In mind, this Canal Slaughter can attack me in twice if it dies the first time. Once it stops getting frozen, that could be relevant. Oh yeah, lightning bloom pickup is pretty huge here. I must here. protect the Fire Lord. Huh, I'm a little bit surprised he didn't go for the the Steward of Scrolls here, but I mean he does have the the multicaster for for draw next turn if he wants it. But he is going to be overloaded for four. But not going to have too much mana to work with. This doesn't feel like a Brucon turn. No, it, it's so sad. This this Lockalar is a huge issue for for Rebob here. So he would just die on the backswing. Um, he does have a decent. Uh, kind of swing turn next turn with the Brucon ch charge call can get can high roll the, the Darkman Rabbit and clear off most of the board but I mean worry is, is quite far ahead here yeah it's gonna take some good rolls off this charge call to get Rebot back in the game where he did play into the rabbit a bit, and there it is. Two rabbits. Rebob only goes for one. Takes a Colossus off the second one. This is what I was talking about. Canal Slogger attacking twice, being very relevant, healing Rebob for 12. Yeah, I do like, I think I like the decision to go for the Colossus on the second Even charge flowers, call. The, the cool. second rabbit. Uh, it did feel like a little bit of overkill, and uh, and Rebob also got to heal for twelve off those double sloggers. It's another rabbit coming back the other way. Yeah, I think I, I'm expecting to definitely see a Fireheart turn here from from Rebomb, I think. I guess Multicaster is also an option, but I don't think Dunk Tank or Feral Spirit are, are really going to cut it. Breaker as well, so pretty much not gonna take any minion damage this turn at least. Another happy guildy.
I just we didn't see a Phoenix pick up off the off of either of those choices there. I feel like it would have been a pretty good setup over the next couple of turns. Especially with the uh, the dunk tank in hand, that the spell damage on that card is really really impactful. Yeah, this could be extremely important later on. And I mean, especially because your hand's full, right? Like you're just burning a card for for no reason. Yeah, yeah, it did seem a little bit of an odd decision to me. Interesting to see the choice to deal six damage to face here. No means at all. I was wondering if we'd see taunts and a board clear instead. Yeah, I think I was somewhat expecting to see the uh, the, the fire chosen, just because you have this um, this phoenix coming up next turn with fire heart in your hand. So I think there's there's definitely uh, a real chance of killing your opponent next turn through burn. Speaking of Fireheart. Some removal picked up here, at least. He does have to be pretty conscious of his hand size here. Um, this this windchill will mill him a card. Not sure about choosing to go for the freeze on Yasiraj. Yeah, also, I mean, there was the argument to pick up the landslide there, which would have uh, cleared off the Yasiraj anyway, with the if you played the guild trader there. Yeah, definitely a lot of different choices that could be made here. I mean, Question is definitely a deck with a lot of a lot of tough decisions on these fireheart turns. You can really uh, lock yourself out with either board space or hand space issues. Um, and the overdraft is picked up here for for worry. So I think this is Keep your enemies close. quite close to lethal here. Close. Actually. Wait, did he have lethal? I'm... I think it's he very close. It was very close. I'm pretty sure he did have it with just Perpetual Flame, uh, Totemic Reflection, and Overdraft. Because you do... 11 damage through the, the Colossus. Um, the Perpetual Flame will overload you for... what, six? And you have two spell damage on each end of the, the uh, Overdraft that gets casted twice. So I believe that would, would have been eight damage from the Overdraft. Um... Yeah, I think <laughs> Rebob gets, gets steals a victory from the, the Jaws of Defeat off of a, a Mist Lethal from Worry. Really? Just back and forth this game. There you have it. A flashy finish. On to game three. Yeah, I personally really enjoy watching Quashom and Mirrors. I, I feel like there is uh, a lot of, or sorry, there are a lot of interesting decisions to be made. And uh, even though Rebob was was behind for for a lot of that mid to late game, he did he did find some some very good lines that brought him, I mean, put him in a position to win the game if if Worry didn't kill him that turn. Absolutely. Yeah, now it looks like we're seeing the, the Beast Druid from Rebound versus Quest Shaman. Um, I 
think this is maybe slightly druid favored, but I'm not entirely sure. I definitely, I think I had um, a positive win rate from from the druid side, but. The matchup was fairly even when I looked at it. I think slightly Shaman favored, if that. But it was very close when I looked at the stats earlier, if I recall correctly. <clears throat> Rebound drawn a bit with this peasant, though. You don't usually see this. Yeah, I'm gonna play it a bit slow here and not play too hard into Perpetual Flame. I do like going for the attack on this Druid of the Reef here though. Um, you know, as both would just die to Perpetual Flame. I agree. Most of Shaman's damage is just three. Yeah, yeah. And so. it, <laughs> there are a ton of uh, three damage options. I mean, like, like this one and that we're seeing here. Uh, and where he finally gets that peasant off the board. It's like Reebok's going for the Owl and Frost Saber Matriarch here with, with the Oracle Balloon in hand. I feel like that could have been a really strong like board refill on the next turn, but he is trying to set up an arbor here, and he's see seen that uh, where he probably doesn't have a partial flame. The fire lord. All right, he's hoping here that he doesn't get punished either. But there's the perpetual flame, and oh. uh, that could clear oh no. quite a bit. Oh no! <laughs> it's the matriarch. Oh no! The worst hit. Oh, that's so sad. <laughs> Nothing is getting cleared. And this is just a beautiful arbor up turn now. Yeah, I mean, surely yeah, it's it's arbor up here, right? Because you've just seen the the perpetual flame. Yeah, and you put your opponent down to three. Go opting a trade. I don't mind it. Yeah, there's so threatening. There's definitely the potential of getting um, landslide off of his discover. That, that definitely could have been an issue for for Rebob there. Yeah, well, unfortunate perpetual flame there, and Rebob takes it two one. Wow, On to that next. Was, that was an insanely quick game. Yeah. So I have. Crystallized up next. I'm gonna send them a friend request as well as their opponent. I think it's Blip Blup. Blup check. A Blup Blup. My mistake. Oh, so we'll get on. To that match real soon. Yeah, it looks like we're seeing uh, Thief Rogue here from Crystallize versus... Uh, no, play with now. Uh, 
like a burn shaman, actually, would be my guess from a uh, block clip. Actually, an OTK shaman. Looking at oh, block okay. clip's list. Yes. Okay, yeah, that, that makes more sense. <laughs> they have cult neophytes teched in. As well as one spammy arcanist. Yeah, I haven't tried to play Deep Rogue since since the nerfs came through, but um, from what I've heard, it really has uh, suffered a lot in win rate. Yeah, losing the Knolls early on, just having them a turn later, makes a huge difference in so many matchups. And the loss in attack matters as well. Yeah, I was surprised Knoll... Like, I... I remember seeing the nerf initially, and I didn't even like see the attack change on the null. I was like, okay, well, I think the rogue will still be fine. And then I realized that the attack also got changed. Um, so definitely a pretty harsh nerf for for wild paw null. Definitely. Tricky choice here for crystallized now. Goes for the biggest. Minion available. And everyone's favorite cook, Cookie, comes down. Yeah, pretty interesting Wild Paw Cavern pickup. I think they go for that instead of trying to curve out with something like Talon to draw the Yasiraj. Boys being forced to use the wicked stab now just to protect their minions. Yeah, it does get push um, definitely a relevant amount of face damage. Really wonder if we can see a Luckily though for uh, for 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 Blood Clip, he's going to be able to chain these macaws and just continually freeze the board. So I don't think we're going to see him taking any more non-charge minion damage uh, in the future. Yeah, I really want to see a Shadow Step on Crystallize then, just to get that Edwin back in hand and buffed up with a bunch of cards. Yeah, it is getting a bit scary though. <laughs> yeah. You do have a 10-10 a Macaw staring you down along with the, the Note Taker and uh, the, the the Frozen, I don't even know how to pronounce that, Staggard? Uh, yeah. I think it's Frozen Staggard. Whichever. Oh. <laughs> Regardless, it's a threatening 3-4. Yeah, you're on a pretty short timer now, I think, to actually close out the game as Rogue. Or, I mean, uh, there, there's always the option of finding scabs. I think we're I just mean, fishing for answers. Uh, interesting trade there. Another board freeze, though. Which means the only way Crystallize gets out of this is with a, uh, a skillful scabs top deck, but as we see, they didn't get it. Yeah, I'm, I'm su I was a little bit surprised by that trade there into the Edwin. Maybe it was just a misclick or something. 
but um, and yeah, importantly, uh, Crystallize is also board locked. He does have the the second flame if he wants to kill off like Oanthi for a Swash Burglar to make more space. But he interesting, is... they don't want to play. Yeah, interesting, they don't want to play the deep freeze here. Yeah, it's the only is, way I see. This is sort of the last freeze for for the shaman here. I mean, the dungeoneer can find the other uh, snowfall guardian potentially, but. Both macaws are down, so if you're able to survive this turn, you're not in a terrible spot. Yeah, I do wonder not going for that deep freeze. It is a little interesting. I'm not even sure what was like what Crystallize was looking for in that spot. Not sure either, but I think that costed them the game. I don't know of any answers in deck that could have saved them from this yeah. point. On seven men, it was a bit odd because obviously on eight you could look for scabs, right? Well, but... not anymore. Yeah. So it is tricky. Personally, they did say they had disconnection issues, so could have something to do with that. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was having a bit of trouble spectating them in the last game. Yes, it was likely that then. We'll get back into the next game with the, for this. Yeah, it looks like we have the, the quest druid up here. This is the thief rogue. That is quite the hand from the quest druid as well. Guff in the mulligan. Yeah, um... I think, uh, well, at least from the people I know, Nail, Nails is probably the, the best quest route player I know. And he, he said, like, basically this deck is a guff deck with uh, a quest added to it. <laughs> Sounds Where about you, right. You basically just want to be getting guff uh, and then getting to, to whatever 13 mana and playing solar resizing to just cheese a bunch of yogs and win the game. I have heard many things about Nails' play on Quest Druid. And apparently he wins games that his spectators don't see lines to win. Yeah, he, he he's definitely quite a talented player. And he a lot of the times he'll just kind of start practicing a, a somewhat off-meta deck and just get really, really good at it. And, I mean, he honestly does make... A lot of a lot of kind of tier three or tier four decks look really really strong when he's playing them. I just realized there's a contraband stash in this thief rogue as well. I assume it's for the mage spells and death rattles pulled from reconnaissance. For the most part. Yeah, kind of an, an earlier inclusion in some of the, the older Thief Rogue decks. Um, but it does provide a lot of value in, in slower matchups. But not really a great play uh, available to the Rogue here. 
This is very much looking like an awkward turn. Here comes Guff. Oh, he even gets to spend that last mana trading away a card. Wow, yes, <laughs> this this knoll sitting at five mana. <laughs> Pretty unfortunate. It hurts to see how the mighty have fallen. Yeah, I mean, you can even play this pretty slowly here. Yeah, I like the studies pickup, I think. Let's you get into hero power here, which you, I think you really want to be doing. I agree. Oh, resizing yeah. is pretty appealing, I think. Blup up is... Gonna take it and agree with you. These two treons are nice. They're not gonna matter too much. But having some sort of board presence is solid in this mid game for the druid, I'd say, right? Yeah, this is such a sad hand for crystallized. It's just, I mean, there's really just no good play to, to make here. Not at all. I mean, you could Wicked Stab face. I mean, I don't know, maybe even prep Wicked Stab to just play the Plunder and kill a Tria. But it does feel really, really wasteful. Yeah, seeing them hold, it's no surprise. Like, using the Wicked Stab this early isn't going to do much either. It's not going to lose value or gain value by playing it or not. Yeah, and just going to keep uh, ramping up the mana here, which I, I do think is is the way to go. Finally, something to do here. Not much going on, though. Yeah, I think I think Netherwind might be your best option. I don't think you're going to be able to really burn down this this quest route without some sort of board presence. I mean, there's there's the corrupted, or sorry, there's the. Uh, Moon touched amulet in hand along with the evolved scales. There's an Ivis. Yeah, Iron Bark here also pretty solid if you want to play that on Samuro. Uh, just to clear off whatever comes out of this nether wind, but obviously you don't know it's a nether wind just yet. I don't think I would be too concerned either if it was nether end. Ibis takes care of it. Yeah, yeah, getting, I guess getting an extra Ibis is quite nice. The sunny thing here is we can't really play scabs because that just means Ibis comes down the next turn. Yeah, and now and they'll just get to play with an extra mana, so it'll just be even better. Well, we have winning giving our opponent an Ibis, and we get an extra wand thief, but. We're losing a board clear in the process. Hmm, not the best pickups here. For... But you do get to corrupt both your uh, amulets, which is pretty impactful.
Here we go. What's in the box? Rune of the oh. Archmage. Yeah, that's that's definitely quite a good pickup. Um, also a really impactful card for Contraband Stash. Yeah, Contraband Stash is now a five man Rune of the Archmage. A deck of lunacy. Well, there goes your ignite. Oh, unfortunate order on that shattering blast, though. It is, but I don't think crystallize is too upset. No, I'd say overall it was uh, a pretty good rune. Uh, I guess depending on how good these deck of lunacy spells are. Always seek a passage and find out. Oh, this mark of the spike shell. All right. Um, but this... this against all odds is just going to clear it off right away. Yeah, that'll quickly take care of the the Ivis. We're going to kill our 1-1-1-2. One, 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 Surprised we're not seeing an emote here from Crystallized. I think I would have instantly emoted after playing that one. <laughs> oh, and Relicary Prime picked up. I'd say that's pretty good. Brawl as well. Yeah, and you can also play your uh, Stand Against Darkness as well. I'm not sure why it was not played there. We're holding it for Contraband Stash. Yeah, I guess... It, oh, okay, yeah, I guess it's not the best card to get back. Right. Well, there's Yogg. Okay. Insta Yogg? I mean, sure. No, you want has, to. It has to be a Yogg pickup, right? I don't think either of these other cards are as impactful. For the viewers, please, if anything. They're hovering over it. I, I do also think it, it is probably just the correct decision. Most likely. They did take it. So, pretty satisfied with that. Yeah, not wanting to give this rogue any sort of healing here. Holding the, the amulets. Probably to push him base damage here. Well, here comes the contraband stash. <laughs> the against all odds coming in huge again. That is funny. You got an Astromancer Solarium as well? Wow, yeah, this, uh... This rogue deck is really <laughs> generating a ton of value here. A lot of it thanks to this, um... This Contraband stash. Yeah, it's working out. Well, it appears like it might be a Yogg turn. Um, you could also clear with Samuro here. We all know that Yogg is just the objectively correct play. You, you do? You just, I mean, you actually don't feel great about using this when we the spike shell. Um, you would also either have to use the, the amulet or the solar... Eclipse to fully clear the board. Right.
Well, you can always send the Samuro into the Reliquary Prime, the 6 7. Oh, that would leave it at 1 health, you're right. Yes. I think they're just juicing up the Yogg here. And using the Samuro, as you said. Oh, it looks like he ran out of time and didn't get the attack off. It's a real shame. He, he did get to keep um, Guff plus Spike Show, which is what he was looking to do. Yeah, if Crystallize wants to, he can actually kill off the Samura with Mr. Smite and actually deny the, the Frenzy effect. You're going to take the board clear, though. I think Counterspell is probably the best option here. I don't think... I mean, Ring Toss just gives you Rogue Secrets, which probably are not as good. Yep, they're very weak. And... Blup Blup is on the back foot. Okay, now it's a Yogg turn. <laughs> Yashraj also pretty solid here to get those uh, amulets back in hand. Yeah, I think you do need to get past these taunt minions somehow. I think Yogg's probably the best way to do that. Oh my god. <laughs> That's one way to the, do it. The absolute best here. Uh, it's a 21-24 and a 10-10. That Crystallize has to answer. Yeah, it looks like Crystallize is going to go for... Sort of a 50-50 brawl here. Because um, I think if either of these minions from from Blup uh, live, uh, he's just going to die. He does have the, the Reliquary Prime if the brawl doesn't go well. I think he's maybe considering playing the, the Pack Runner as well, but it's just going to go for the, the four minion brawl. He yeah, just goes. the one up. A huge swing. I mean, it looks like Crystallize is still really behind on resources if he, like this... Either the Guff or the Yashraj can kill off this, this Reliquary Prime immediately. Yeah, that deck of Lunacy earlier from the Rune of the Archmage should really come back to bite Crystallized here. Yeah, it hasn't had the best spells. I mean, the Brawl did, did end up being quite useful. But a zero mana rigged fair game is not exactly the best. <laughs> Crystallize 
They are going to get rid of this 8 8. Not sure where we go from here, though. I'd be a little bit worried about Mirror Energy. I, I also don't know if you really need to play around it. I think you're, you're quite far ahead now that you can just jam this Yasharaj. This is looking very decided right now. Okay, well, we get to draw two at least. Okay, we're alive. You know, that does keep us alive. How to play it, right? Um, you are probably, I mean, if you, yeah, you are just dead. Yeah, uh, if you don't. Yeah, this also matters for Rick Fair game. True, yeah. Yeah, um... Might not be able to... To prevent that proc. No more choose one spells. Rune is very low on resources. Yeah, a little bit, sort of running out of gas here. We do see the Solarian Prime picked up. Probably just rip that right away, I think. Yeah, I think if that you're very likely to at least draw a couple of cards. And if this clears the board, then I'm not sure the Druid has anything else left. Another deck of Lunacy. Wow, that is a pretty awful Solarian Prime. Luckily, he does have the Cone of Cold in hand. That'll actually do something. Okay, uh, suddenly Crystallized is in a very good spot. Yeah, it's down to Blubblub's final card. Wow, yeah, he's just... That's pretty much it. Yeah. So after... A a lot of back and forth play. This game's gonna go to Crystal Last. Yeah, I think I think Blubblub did um, maybe use his solar eclipses a bit ineffectively. Uh, I think a lot of the time you want to be using them on uh, what's it called? Your, your resizing pouches. And he did end up running out of resources in the end there. I think maybe being able to pick up another Yogg or Yashraj would have, I mean, definitely could have made it, uh, been enough of a difference to win the game there. For sure. But yeah, that was, that was game three, right? I believe so. And so let's go to Chewy and Owash. For our next game, I'm gonna send them the friend requests. Yeah, it looks like we have a quest shaman versus uh, a control warrior matchup. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think normally I would say this this is definitely quite a favored matchup for the the Quest Shaman. But I mean, I have seen Control Warriors win it before. Still in the process of adding. Interesting to see a control warrior brought, though. Is this also the control warrior that hit rank one? Uh, I'm not entirely sure. It looks similar, for sure, um, with that Captain uh, Galvagar. Yeah, this is a, a different build, actually. Uh, okay. The one that hit one recently ran Azoth. This one is more focused on Captain Galvangar shenanigans, I'd say. So, pretty interesting to see. Especially since it's doing well, it seems. Yeah. Um, Chewie could have completed his quest there that turn, but I think uh, he definitely wanted to save the guidance for post-Brucon. Definitely want to get a lot of value out of that in this matchup. A lot of the times you can just kind of burn them out with, with the cards you have in your deck, but it, it is always good to have some sort of insurance if they're able to get out of range. It's going to be very hard for the control warrior at this stage, though. Yeah, not a lot of armor gain. I mean, not, there is the frozen buckler, but you will just lose that. You lose half that armor on the next turn. Not a lot to do at the moment. for the brawl and attack. Does keep Osh at nine cards in hand. Yeah, oh, I... And yeah, something I forgot to mention is that there is a muteness in this Control Warrior deck, so that's definitely another thing that Chewie was worried about last turn. And seeing it, seeing the Brucon come out with no concern for Utanis has to feel good here. Yeah, and the Warrior is, I mean, for a Warrior, you're, you're definitely quite low on health. Uh, if Chewie picks up a little bit more burn next turn, he could he could just close out the game here. Yeah, fortunately, there's not a lot going on in Chewie's hand just now. It's going to yeah. really depend on Instructor Fireheart, I think. Yeah, I could also see him just starting the turn with a wind chill on one of his own minions. Node in's an interesting option. Pretty likely to, to clear out the zapper. A shield shatter instead though. I don't really hate this, to be honest. This slows down the shaman's burn by a turn. I I would... You don't really want to be chipping away armor that's gonna go away anyway, right? Yeah. Um, it does kind of leave Chewy open to just wind chill here and look for a charged call in his deck and just put on pressure that way. I would definitely, I think I'll, I'd expect to see 
I'm cycling a little bit for that. And nine cards. Can still play Primordial Studies and get two spell damage minions here. Yeah, I might also just see him dump the landslide as well. Steward's a pretty good pickup here. Phoenix as well is also solid. Might just see him play the Phoenix here and set up for a huge burn uh, in two turns. I think that's going to be the play. Yeah, and also holding the Feral Spirit to not overload himself next turn. But, I mean, as we saw in in one of the previous series, you do have to be pretty careful when playing in Fireheart post-quest completion. Because you, <laughs> a lot of times you will mill your, uh, your, your next Fireheart card and then break the chain. Actually, fairly close to lethal here. Uh, the warrior's at 26, and we have... I think we... Do we have it here? Oh yeah, we do actually have the mana for it. Yeah, if he just yes. the lightning bolt first with the serpent shrine, that is just gonna close out the game here. Should do it. Yeah, I mean, nicely done by Chewy here, just being very, very patient with his resources and just waiting for the opportunity to kill the warrior over the top. Absolutely. Usually the worry is a bit of a sitting duck in these matchups, and this is exactly why. Yeah. Uh, definitely not surprised to see the Shaman get through here. Um, the other Ash's other deck was, was the Paladin, which is also quite a good matchup for, for Quest Shaman, so I don't think you feel too bad about that. Um, Chewie's other deck being the the Thief Robe with, with one Contraband stash, so it looks like that's what this lineup's going to try to beat to get through. We have here a mage, well, a rogue disguised as a mage, I should say, versus the control warrior. Yeah, I think, at least from stats before the patch, this was a little bit better for, for Thief Rogue. But, I mean, control warrior builds builds uh, very so much that I, I don't think there's any good data on this matchup. It probably does depend a lot on how much value the the rogue can generate. And, I mean, with a card like Contraband Stash, it's, it's definitely possible that you can get a ton of value options. Absolutely. Syrup Cash, probably the best pickup on two for the warrior here. 
Yeah, I think one of the the issues with Control Warrior right now is that it's fairly limited on card draw. Um, you know, Outrider's Axe is pretty good, but if you're not able to get value with that card, you're, you're generally in a pretty bad spot most of the time. I think that's the main issue holding back Control Warrior right now in most areas in the metagame. Just that lack of draw, you're forced to run a much heavier curve than you're used to, and that leads to a lot of bricked hands in most situations. Yeah, especially when you're running a card like Frozen Buckler in your list. Um, it's not really a card that's great on its own, mainly just for the, the, sheer, the shield shatter synergy. <laughs> um, so if a card like that's sitting in your hand without any sort of, you know, like shield slam... Or some, or another armor synergy card. You're definitely feeling pretty bad. I'm a little surprised Chewy didn't go for the reconnaissance into the null last turn because it would have meant his double agent was uh, active, and now he's gonna have to wait an extra turn. Uh, if he wants to play this double agent out. Okay. I mean, high main's a pretty good pickup here, I think. I mean, back in, like, 2014, that was a pretty tough card for Control Warrior to deal with. I think uh, Chewie is maybe thinking about um, playing with Vanessa here, potentially. Wondering if there's maybe a better Vanessa at all. Or he's going to step the Null and just try to preserve that health and not give any... We are getting the Vanessa down as well. Yeah, there aren't too many good Vanessa cards to get in this matchup, I don't think. Um, so getting, you know... A weapon that does 9 damage face is good enough. Definitely will matter in the long run. I was a little bit surprised to see that Shadow Step on the Null, though. I, I do like, um, you know, keeping pressure on board, but I wonder if that will, uh, you know, hurt Chewie a bit in the long run, losing uh, a card that could be uh, used to generate a ton of value. Yeah, I don't know. It's not like we're denying draw either here. Yeah, that, that's the thing as well, right? You you played the Vanessa anyway, so it didn't really prevent that. I thought that's what he was going for at first. Doesn't seem to be the case. Another shield slam picked up as well here. A couple options for Chewie this turn as well. Could just high main and extortion now. Seems quite clean. This, uh, this Frozen Buckler Shield Shatter is looking pretty appealing now. Yeah, I do this. I do like this a lot now. You can also Shield two. Slam off <clears throat> one of the minions if you really want to. Especially since you just generated another Shield Slam. Uh, probably isn't a huge need to be greedy with your resources. And we do get a draw here off of the Outrider's Axe as well. Yeah, 
yeah, I think if I'm Ash here, this is kind of an ideal situation. Like, you're getting to draw a lot off of the axe. Um, you're not getting too low on health, and and you're kind of keeping up on board with your re with with players and stuff. I think the warrior's in a, a decent enough spot right now. Yeah, especially with all these resources in hand to clear. Looks like we're going to hold the weapon charge, though. Interesting choice. I understand T2s aren't very threatening, but we were just discussing how Warrior's lack of draw is really the bane of its matchups right now, and choosing not to draw is very interesting with that in mind. Yeah, I'm not sure what the reasoning behind that was. Because, I, I don't know, you just took the damage anyway from the hyena attacking. I, I mean, maybe he saw, like, the Rancor come into his hand and was thinking about a potential Rancor turn. Yeah, it is going to be the Rancor here. I guess Osh valued the, the Rancor more than trading. <clears throat> you can't always trust it's Mountain Bears, another sticky minion though. going to be tricky for the warrior to deal with it. Yeah, I think uh, aside from, from Rattlegore, maybe, uh, this Mountain Bear is going to be one of the toughest minions for, for Warrior to deal with. There is there is the second Frozen Buckler Mistakes picked up, so one. you could go for Buckler, Shield Slam, uh, Shield Shatter here. But it probably does feel really bad to lose the second Shield Shatter when you know there's a Contraband Stash that could come down at any moment. <laughs> Yeah, so we're just choosing to make their beefy taunt instead. Yeah, a reasonable idea. I think we're probably going to see Outriders actually maybe a Wicked Stab this turn. Yeah, the Rook doesn't really have any really clean ways of dealing with it. So multiple resources being sentence this is good for the warrior I'd say yeah we do see a doom hammer added to the hand and that swash burglar there is a there is one rust rot viper in in the warrior deck here but I, I personally I would not be expecting to see a doom hammer come down but we could uh, if the, this viper is <clears throat> picked up maybe next turn or something we could see the viper Take away that last charge from the, the the axe and then see a doom hammer come down and deal 16. It would be pretty funny. Having Galvin Guard now in hand. That's not going to be doing too much. For a while, doesn't really answer the board. There's no need to kind of finish off the rogue here. Yeah, pretty tough spot. Looks like he's just gonna go for probably sh shield slam into a shield shatter. I would expect. Yes, That's exactly the same. <clears throat> Yeah, just equipping the bulwark as well. Not taking any more chip damage.
Warrior is in a pretty good spot now. You could swing with the axe and then equip the doom hammer and get actually get a second attack in. Now looks like that's what Chewie's going for to chip away at that bulwark. Now the question is, do you play Wild Paw and Null here? Should we choose him to hold it? Don't really blame him. It's not really putting that much pressure on the board. But now with nothing on the rogue side, the warrior can just drop a 9-9 charge minion. Yeah, holding the provoke in hand as well instead of cycling for that uh, kind of bear off bear off emergency button so we might see the provoke cycle this turn considering that there is literally nothing to play here you guys i'm back Welcome back. This room is really low on resources now. Yeah, both sides seem fairly low on resources, but the Kargath pickup is pretty nice. Warrior has all the answers it could ask for. It just doesn't really have much pressure beyond the Kargath. Passage here is quite nice. You can maybe pick up a scabs here or something else. Oh, so do you go for the Edwin here or do you try to I think you maybe play the Edwin first. But it is it is kind of risky because you might want to step the Edwin to go for a Mr. Smite turn. Oh, you have to play the note taker and the contraband stash together, right? It's so juicy. We're not playing the note taker. Opting to remove the card gap instead. I don't know, what are we saving the note taker for here? Shadow step? Uh, yeah, I'm surprised this uh, this contraband stash was played last turn because I, I felt like playing it with the diligent note taker would have almost entirely closed out the game. Yeah, I'm curious to see where the note taker gets value instead now. Um, I think maybe shadow step could be an option. Uh, that's that's the only thing I can really see, like a shadow step on a swash burglar here, maybe. Are is certainly not what you want to see as the rogue at this stage in the game. Yeah, just looking for a wand thief spell here. Um, Mirror Energy is interesting because we know there's a Kargath Prime in deck. Yeah, there's nothing minions left in this warrior. 
right? But, yeah, there's there is a mutinous Silas and Rattlegore also that we haven't seen yet. And also, was the Viper played yet? I don't I don't think it was, right? Viper was not played yet. Yeah, so I guess that's that's another minion that could proc the mirror entity. Yeah. If I were you, I wouldn't be upset with the Viper either, to be honest. Alright, so we are using the sh no taker with Shadow Step. So we get to step the smite twice. It is setting up for lethal. Yeah, it does also set up a pretty good brawl here. I don't know if we're going to see brawl, though. Oh, sorry, I meant to say yeah. rancor. Yeah, we have a juicy rancor here. Sure, why we wasted the shield slam there. A slight mistake. Yeah, a bit of a misstep there that might not getting that removal might hurt hurt them a decent bit. Rancor is still gonna be pretty good here. You can even play the minefield afterwards if you want to gain max armor. That's a bear off as we see. Kind of like the bear off here. Yeah, it lets you push the hero uh, power face, so the rogue is essentially on a three turn clock now. That's a lot of damage it's going to have to do. One thief is pretty good here, though. There's a lot of options in terms of, I mean, there's the uh, barrier or in terms of getting face damage. We have the, we're seeing the rune door get picked up. Wicked Stab also pretty good. I'd expect to see this Shadow Step probably come down on the Wand Thief. Although... This is pretty close to lethal with um, with Mr. Smite and Shadow Step. It's very close. Oh, the Kargath Prime pickup though is huge. There is still the Mirror Entity, but the Kargath will probably just kill off its own, the other Kargath, gain 10 armor. So he's going to go up to 27. I mean, you could even not hear a power one of these minions and just hear a power face. And then Chewie basically has to kill them on the next turn or the game's just over. I'm not sure... How the the rogue gets there just yet with this? Maybe some sort of Edwin thing. I mean, I guess there was the the scabs top deck at any point could have kept them in the game. Uh, this appears to be one damage off, sadly for Chewie. Wow, yeah, super close game, but. Yeah, the warrior is going to take it here. Yeah, just barely hanging on. So close. Well, and now we're going to see the Librum Paladin versus the Thief Rogue again. Uh, this Librum Paladin notably has two Sunwing Squawkers and a Mutinous the Devourer. Uh, the Sunwings sun are pretty interesting tech choices.
curious to see how useful they are against this rogue now if they come into play. Yeah, in my own experience, Sunwing Squawker is not a great card in Liberum Paladin. Definitely a lot stronger in a Paladin that runs Blessing of Authority. I would agree with that as well. Lost getting the ideal one drop on one though. Um, yeah, there's also notably no noble mount in this paladin list. That's likely how those suddenly squawkers are being slotted in. I wonder if we're going to see double agent played here. Looks like we are. Yeah, we saw we saw last game Chewie holding the the sort of disguise, I guess, for a turn to discount the null a little bit more. But with the the double agent instead of the null in hand, probably just better to get the stats on board right away. Most likely. Double attendant by turn three. Very good. Yeah, and also double Ooh. true seeker in hand. Um, so you are going to get basically the maximum Librum discount. Uh, only issue for, for the Paladin here is that they're somewhat running out of resources. Oh, he found the Noble Mount. Missing from Owash's deck. Should be has it. Well, they don't call it Thief Rogue for nothing, I guess. <laughs> yeah, not too much to play from this hand, so just gonna passage it away. does help a little bit. I actually see a Wand Thief and a Plunder come down instead of the, the Extortion now. Probably a little bit better of a play, I think. Let's build a Snowman. Do you guys want to build a Snowman? Yeah, I think, I mean, Build the Snowman's quite a good card for, for the Contraband stash. If you if you manage to get that, build the, the third Build the Snogger option off of it. That's a 9-9 it's a nine, nine and 4 other spells for 5 mana. Pretty solid. Yeah, and well, plus it'll also add the first two to you, back to your hand, right? Or sorry, it'll add the Build the Snogger and Build the Snow Brute to your hand. So it's it's a lot of stats on board plus a ton of value generation. Do we hovering over that noble mount, but looking for something off reconnaissance first? Probably debating between the Cutlass and the Plunder. We're going to see a Plunder here. Yeah, I think, I mean, Plunder has a better immediate effect, giving you an extra 2-1 and not having to trade off your Wand Thief, whereas um, potentially having a, a much higher damage Plunder later would be a bit better.
I think if I'm the paladin here, I'm not too worried about the pressure that's on board. Like, you could just play your second Truth Seeker and end your turn, I think. I agree. Getting a 4-6 taunt is pretty solid here. We already saw both plunderers come down, so it's going to be harder for Chewy to deal with the Truth Seeker. We also know that there's no Knolls in hand because they didn't play them last turn. Interesting that we go for the Broom here, though. Yeah, it's a pretty liberal use of resources. There's actually a pretty good Vanessa here. I think Broomstick's a solid card to, to take away. Are we deciding that they'll wait for a better card, though? Yeah, I wonder, I mean, he probably has uh, a card in mind specifically, but I do wonder what, what that card is. That is a funny interaction. Yeah, right there. <laughs> Liberum Hope now has been fully discounted, so it does get pulled off of the Stone Hearth Vindicator. Yeah, so... We could play that Labor of Hope on a minion and get a second one off of Sunwing Squawker. Yeah, it looks like that's the play that's going to be made here. Playing the Liberum of Wisdom first to make sure that the Sunwing will play the Liberum of Hope. It's just definitely a solid turn here. Yeah, on a bit behind Shui's side, it's a really tough clear. I mean, you, just looking at the hand, you either have to expend Mr. Smite or take 8 damage to clear off this taunt minion. The uh, Wicked Stab is picked up, though. That that will be pretty useful. Just let us clear the 8-8. Eight eight. And we buff Edwin as well. This is super risky. Yeah, I think they just opting to, to freeze the the uh, ancient guardian there. Yeah, I don't I don't hate it. You're definitely rewarded by getting Shadowcraft or Scabs here. Yeah, that was definitely a pretty sizable risk, I'd say, without that top deck. Yeah, I don't think we're going to see the second Sunwing come down. Probably a bit too committal to the board. For duty. I actually don't hate dropping the second Sunwing Squawker. You're going into turn 8. They play Shadowcraft or Scrap. You get the Sunwing Squawker back anyway. And you're not milling by playing the Squawker either. I don't know. Yeah, I guess it wouldn't have been bad for the, the Paladin anyways, so... We are just replaying them here, after all.
This is really hard on the rogue. Yeah, no, and because the Maestro was played, this this Samuro could come down and clear off the, the entire board here as well. We do that and give away our Sunwing Squawker with an 8 8 Divine Shield taunt. It's like we do. Yeah, I, I think it's probably worth it. We do do pick up the uh, the second Liberum of Hope off of that um, Knight of Anointment. This is going to have to be a nutty wand thief now. Yeah, I, I wonder if <laughs> if anything short of a uh, Rune of the Archmage will do anything here. Well, there's the evocation, but you need a nutty evo. We have to rip the evo at this point. Yeah, unfortunately, only getting four cards off it is going to be pretty tough, and none of those are good options. just isn't what Shui wants us to see. Yeah, I mean, with both prize plunderers gone, I don't really see a whole lot of outs here for Chewy. Yeah, we're still looking... Like... We're still looking at Two eight eight with Taunted Divine Shield in hand. That we know of. Obviously from our end we see more. There's another Leader of Hope and a Varian. That's just been buffed. Yeah, it looks like second squawker is gonna come down here too and put <laughs> three eight eights on the board. Squawkers certainly certainly did some work. Yeah, and I mean, seemed great in this matchup. Although, I mean, without that without that Stone Hearth uh, draw into the to Liberum Pope, it would have been probably not nearly as good. Yeah. So that round goes to Ulash. Congrats to them. On to the next round they go. Yeah, I was trying to line up um over Bobson, but he's uh he's pretty much around ahead waiting for the Ash and Chewy um matchup and you know, I'm just trying to find somebody else here that we can fill the gap with. So uh yeah. it looks like lasagna and Halo Halo is about to start. Yeah, I can jump on that. I was just gonna add Halo Halo. Do you guys have Halo Halo on your list? I'm going to add them. Uh, let me check. <clears throat> yeah, it looks like I need to add them. Tournament seems to be going pretty smoothly. That's what we're going to focus on is uh, lasagna, so hopefully Halo Halo can, can add us when they're ready.
looks like we have a quest hunter versus handlock right now. Yeah, it seems like the the quest hunter has been doing pretty well for lasagna so far. <clears throat> Just gonna spectate lasagna for for now till Halo Halo gets online and then the names will match match up. Yeah, not a great hand for Halo Halo here. It does have the the neophyte to maybe slow down Lasagna's quest progression, but I mean we can see that he has the the Barrett Cotobane on curve here. Um, so not so the fact that Halo Halo didn't really put on any pressure means that he he can just kind of develop something slowly if he wants to. He's going to play the Explosive Trap, though, which will allow him to play the Bola Shot uh, and reduce his hero power to zero next turn. I like this play in trying to get value out of the Explosive Trap here. He won't be taking any damage from a Cult Neophyte. Like you said, it does proc the quest as well. He does help the Warlock in getting through their quest, but it doesn't activate the next stage. So it should be okay. Actually, this this lines up really well for for Lasagna. He can play the Bola Shot on the Tour Guide, uh, and then play Explosive Trap and just hear a power face. Yeah, this is very unfortunate for the Handlock. Just getting cleared over and over, while the Hunter puts more damage into their face. Yeah, I think if you don't get, you know, early giants or like an anetheron down, it, it is really tough to compete with the, the quest hunter's pace. Point, you know it's explosive trap. I don't even think you bother attacking. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm liking this Tamsin play here if he wants to go for that. You, you pretty much need to get down to to 10 cards in deck if you want to have a chance of winning this game, I think. Good touch now and play a giant. Let me drain soul and touch to avoid dying. I'll also attack and trigger the I don't know if we had to do that. I don't think we had to tap there. I mean, it does put you one health higher and also I mean still lets you play a giant as well. Well, you're not going one health higher. You're still taking two damage. You're just drawing an extra card. Oh, you meant as opposed to just attacking in? Yes. Well... Quick shot pickup might just nullify that anyways. 
Um, the the bristleback is going to be live. There is still such a tough spot to be in. Warlock really needs to heal here. Crystal back and solid start. Not sure if we want to play the Baron Scavenger yet, though, if we're planning on attacking. Okay, well, there is a, the potential of just winning through Battlegrounds Battlemaster now. Oh, okay, this, does this bullet shot really do much? I guess not really. I like the Serpent Bloom personally. We can play Tavish, then drop Serpent Bloom. And maybe the 6 3. The 6 3 and the 3 3. It is tough. Like, you're really afraid of uh, BGBM, but I don't, I don't know if there's a good way to even play around it either. I don't think there is, because we're not playing around it here either. No. Yeah, I do think it was much better to play Tavish if we're, if we're just not playing around Battlegrounds Battlemaster. I think so as well. <clears throat> After Halo's turn, you guys uh, don't mind messaging them to see if they can accept my friend invite. Yeah, I'll make sure I message them. After their turn, of course. <laughs> <clears throat> Here we go. Thank you. They add you? Yep, we're good. Perfect. Uh, it's a bit of a, I mean, seems to have turned a corner now in this game where uh, Lasagna is definitely the one who's on the back foot. Not getting a Tavish down last turn is really costing him. It does luckily pick up the Overwhelm, so it does mean he can play Tavish here and clear off the board. Once again, the Warlock's on the clock. Yeah, luckily you do have the second Bristleback plus the, the Touch to heal up a bunch here. And you can actually put on a ton of pressure as well with the Netheron, um, Null, Giant. I think you have the mana for all of that, along with the Bristleback and the Touch. Yes, we do. Oh, 
Okay, I think, I guess just look for something through Kodo Bay now, right? I don't know if there's anything that can really kill from this high health, but... Not in standard, at least. Yeah, if this were Odd Hunter, the, there would definitely be some some options. Unfortunately, that's also a dead deck in Wild now. Yeah, after that, that rapid fire nerf, uh, deck is sort of on life support. <laughs> well I can see. Halo, Halo takes it. Certainly yeah, that, very close. Was that game one? I'm yeah. Not sure. No, no game one. Should be. Okay. Yeah. So I there's the the burn shaman left for, for lasagna versus the warlock and the the quest shaman for Halo. Um, <clears throat> probably would definitely prefer lasagna here, I think. I think those are both pretty solid matchups for, for the burn shaman. Just to update our viewers there for the, the bracket, it looks like Tom Tomat uh, is into the final four with Rebobson. Not going up against Rebobson, but... Yeah, so the winner of this match we're seeing right now will play Tomat in the semis. Yep. And then Rebob <clears> is <throat> waiting in the semis on the other side of the bracket. And Rebob will either see Crystallized or Oash. Okay. Spectator bug again, maybe? Don't yeah, I think if, uh, maybe just a bit of bit of time in between games there. I bring the fury of the just starting out, so we have Quest Hunter versus Quest Shaman. Oh yeah, sorry, my mistake. I said there was just the Burn Shaman left for Lasagna, but yeah, I realized that Halo actually Halo Halo actually won the last game instead. So yeah, there's still the Quest Shaman and the Burn Shaman to get through. Uh, yeah, bit of a slow start for, for lasagna here. Aim shot's never too bad. And the overwhelm pickup is sort of nice too. Yeah, if we see a feral spirit come down here, it will this spring the trap will line up pretty nicely into it. Get to pull out an explosive trap and also clear off the the sleep breaker. Aim, there isn't another secret to pull from this honorable kill. But I also understand the sentiment. Halo, Halo is going all in here. Yeah, we are going to see a pretty hard punish here. Uh, not that you care, I don't think, too much about your minion presence. Uh, it is nice to get chip damage in. But I think, you know, you, you definitely prioritize quest progression a little bit more. Halo Halo knows that's explosive trap, so do you freeze? Yeah, you're freezing your 
So it's just going to die anyway. Seems solid to get a draw. Yeah, plus you want to activate another spell school on your multicaster. That's pretty good in that regard, I think. I can actually play a, a Wind Fury on this wolf if you want to. Just to hear a power. Well, this overwhelm here is gonna reduce the cost of the hero power down to zero. Makes a pretty easy mana feeder panther return, I think. Gonna fully complete the quest this turn though. Doesn't Tavish on six? Yeah, I think Halo Halo is definitely feeling a ton of pressure now. He's already down to 15. He does have the Slogger in hand to heal up, but still not in a great spot. Blogger is pretty nice here, though. It's likely that it sticks, since Lasagna would need a one-mana spell to clear it, and we know that several of those have already been played. Yeah, it definitely works out pretty nicely for him. And now the Arcane spell's picked up, so that's going to make the Slogger... Or, sorry, the, the Multicaster draw three, probably next turn, I would imagine. Now the shaman is basically full healed. Yeah, this this explosive trap is pretty clutch here for Lasagna. Going to be able to. It's actually going to elect to clear off the board instead of setting up the explosive, so you can play this mana feeder panthera. I think I like this more, just deny healing, really. Get some board presence out there so you can get some chip damage in, because at this rate, spells alone are not going to get you to the end game. Yeah, Halo Halo is, you know, it's only still three overload cards away from completing the quest, but... Oh, interesting. Going for... A charged call here for, for a bit of tempo. I like the Bone Shiver Vanguard here, I think. Big beefy minion, and it's a taunt. Yeah, that would be my gut as well, I think. Um, I mean, this owl could just <laughs> send eight damage base and put the hunter down to eight, but I think that's a bit unrealistic. Would be very funny, though. So, Halo Halo does go with the safe play. Guidance pickup. Ooh, Devolving's quite good. Yeah. Fortunately, sort of went for that at the end of the turn, so didn't have the option to play the Devolving, which would have been quite good against this Panthera. But, I mean, Devolving's also pretty good this, like this upcoming turn as well. Now with two buffed, low-cost minions on the board. Oh, Piercing Shot's a great pickup. Yeah, this is exactly the kind of board you want to use Arcane Missiles on. 
Yeah. I'd be very yeah. surprised if we don't see it come down. Gonna get to see the multicaster now. Devolving missiles as well. Um, so we're at one to three on the final stage of the quest. I'm curious as to how we're going to go about completing it and then playing Brucon. Probably just holding our overloads. Oh, okay. Going for a 10 cost charge call here. Looks like we're going to play the Zapper as well. And does get the Colossus. Probably the best one he could have gotten there. Maybe, you could argue maybe Deathwing was also, was maybe a bit better. But, I mean, this is quite a good option. I like Colossus just for the stickiness alone. It also means you're almost guaranteed to get a Wind Fury target here. Right. And then you're presenting lethal. Yeah, so he's two off right now. I think we're definitely going to see and dig at least a little bit for this extra two damage. Yeah, at this point, Lazani is just sending everything face. Um, this is, yeah, an explosive trap here. He can heal back up to uh, to 16, so I don't think he's too worried about dying with, with no cards in hand. Yeah, I definitely like this a lot. It means that pretty much any top deck is lethal here, and yeah. That the spring the trap's not going to be good enough to keep him alive. So Halo, Halo moves off. Yeah, I'm taking a 2-0 over Lasagna, and the story of the quest hunter comes to an end today, unfortunately. But well played by Halo, Halo in that match. Now, <clears throat> do we uh, do we ask the players to hold the final? Uh, we could go to. I, I think we can let them play. Okay. Better to just keep things moving. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think um, Crystal has no wash playing. Yeah, it looks like they're in game two at the moment. So, should we head over there? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so Crystallized uh, Handlock was banned, and Oasha's Liberum Paladin was banned. Looks like we have the Awash's Control Warrior versus the Thief Rogue from Crystallized. Interesting Coil Fang Warlord. There's two of them in hand, actually. It'd be very hard for the Warrior to deal with later. Yeah, that's definitely in in the top uh, cards I would pick to get off of Reconnaissance against Control Warrior. Yeah, it's almost, uh, I mean, a bit of, uh, like, pick whichever great option you want to take here. I mean, there's there's the Warlord, but there's also potentially setting up an Edwin. Yeah, and also, <laughs> if you want to Edwin, you could also play Macaw as well to get the Edwin battle cry, which is pretty funny. <clears throat> Time 
is ticking. More meat. Pretty nice Kargath here, though. Uh, I think this is probably one of the better targets you'll get to use it on. Could see a, a heavy plate cycled here. Out of your depth. <clears throat> Was it worth potion of illusioning ever in that situation? Get a one one rush that summons a five nine. Yeah, you I think? think the hand. The I'm. I don't know how much. I mean, maybe there's. That he's seen the contraband stash now, he wants to play that and then the potion of illusion to get two more. But I do think it was it was definitely a really strong play to do that last turn as well. Does get to steal this five nine, uh, but does give crystallized a viper here. Maybe the contraband stash does come down, like you said. I like the potion first. I guess we don't want yeah, them. It does kind of effectively do the same thing, right? Because you are going to get the... Oh, do you know? Oh, I guess you don't get the the potion back from Contraband because it's partially a rogue card, even though it was generated by Wand Thief. Yeah, that's why I was so confused by this. Maybe, I mean, it could have been that Crystallize expected to get the, the potion back. It is possible. So, we have a 1-1 one, one Viper in our hand. If we trade the Viper... It stays a one mana one one in a deck, right? I believe so. Yeah, yeah. I, I, tradable cards definitely don't change in cost when you when you trade them. There's a huge swing now with yeah, the Master Kelthazad. This is a nutty Kelthazad here. You get to trade in a Coil Fang and a Null here. Are we not going to see the weapon attack in? Okay, we are. Rue is very much in the back foot now. Yeah, it went from the, the rogue having a, a, a really tough board to deal with to uh, just taking that entire board for themselves. A donation. I wonder if it's time to play Edwin here. Yeah, your deck's getting like 
you're, there's only eight cards left in deck, so the Edwin Chain, I mean, you're going to run out of cards to chain eventually. And I think the longer you wait, the more likely you'll hit scabs and break the chain. Time's ticking. Uh, I am surprised we... Okay, so we're going to see it here. Oh, and there's the scabs. Oh, That's so unfortunate. Uh, I mean, you can step the the Edwin here. I don't we know if should step gonna... the Edwin. Yeah, we're, we're going to see that. Uh, looks like he got all the actions off. Missed the weapon swing, though, if he was planning on killing Kel'Thuzad there. I think Galvin Gar makes scabs really awkward now. I'm surprised we saw that. Oh, I guess that wouldn't have been lethal anyway with scabs, but... is isn't, but we're going to be taking a lot of damage. Bulwark yeah, is also like awkward. The bulwark here anyways. Yeah, I think Crystallize might regret wasting the Rust Rot. Or trading it away, and now not anymore. <laughs> now, <laughs> yeah, it's just gets my it right words. Nice. Yeah, I mean, Awash can even replay this Kel'Thuzad and play Rancor and get two stealth minions back for himself. And then is actually just threatening lethal with the with the Captain Galvangar. I wonder if we were supposed to play Rustrat Viper first. So that we can keep the Scavs battle cry in the pool just in case. For brilliant McCall. Yeah that was a bit odd. Yeah, now we're kind of punished. I guess we... Hmm. Yeah, it looks like we are going to see the Kel'Thuzad Rancor play here. Yeah. Yeah, we could have gone Viper, Scabs, and then trade the Viper. Try to do something. Instead, we're faced with a bit of an awkward turn. I mean, we can still play this Macaw, I guess, and bounce everything back. You have to, right? Yeah, I, I mean, we're probably just dead with almost any other play, except for maybe Wand Thief into some sort of clear. It also gives you an extra two more four twos, right? Yeah, it does. And looking for some sort of lethal here. Interesting that we don't see a viper. Yeah, I think just a misorder there. Um, I guess not that it would have mattered. Yeah, it wouldn't have mattered. I don't know. This turn felt a little... ...out of whack. I don't think that's what Crystallize plan on doing. But they saw the rope and just went with that. Yeah, when, the, when your time gets down that low, it is tough to, to make sound decisions a lot of the time. Especially when there's so many actions to queue up.
Yeah, I think speed of play is definitely um, one of those skills in Hearthstone that's become a lot more relevant uh, in the more recent metas. So a 50-year-old like me can't keep up with the kids, eh? <laughs> hey, you said it, not me. Hey, man. <laughs> I'm just admitting what my my, uh, my crutches, I guess. Literal. <laughs> it's okay. We all appreciate you, Saku. The one-click guy. <clears throat> Wait, so does Crystallize not... Wait, did he just start the game as a rogue? Or is he they not don't run, run my Astra. What? How did I not realize this until... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's crazy. What do you this think is... the Contraband stash is there for? Yeah, that is a bit odd. Yes, to say the <laughs> say the least. But he did have the activator for the double agent anyway, so he's going to be able to play it on too. <clears throat> yeah, I think both sides kind of getting the ideal start. Crystallize can actually trade in here and then play the Devouring Plague. Get a full clear. Not sure you really need to. It's not a super threatening board. Yeah, and the porcupine is quite nice here. Yeah, augment, augmented, uh, augmented porcupine seems all right here. Uh, most of the stuff you're lining into is two health. So. It also fights for board pretty well. And pretty awkward turn for the druid here. I think these, this, I mean, seeing how the Ivis and Ghidra are here, kind of showing why a lot of people have cut them from their lists. Yeah, I'd expect we probably just see a Moonlit Guidance. Yeah, that's interesting. I thought he was going for the, the hero power so that he could kill off the, the double agent, but he's actually just going face with the minions. Be devouring here. Um potentially. There's also maybe a an it could by Edwin and Shadow Step it. I don't think Shadow Stepping Edwin is that great in this matchup. But yeah, not a great hand at the moment. I you could also I think step this double agent as well. Yeah, I was surprised we didn't go with the step double agent at first just to Get some more board. You don't really care about hitting the druid in the face early on. You just want to control the board. Interesting options here. The composting is is nice because your hand is so small, but the peasant's really the only thing that's going to synergize with this Oracle of the Loon. Definitely not an easy decision here. 
horrible one association is also the only way you clear the board. Yeah, I'll just take the, the peasant. I think we want to prep just yet. Um, yeah, it doesn't change too much unless you plan on... Okay, so we're going to play the plunder now. And we're leaving the Edwin on board. That's what this is saying. Yeah, I, I definitely prefer this in this matchup. I think playing for board is much better than setting up some some burst combo when uh, you really don't need to, I don't think. Not usually. Uh, definitely a pretty weak Ivis here if you were to go for it. Would only be a likely a 5-5 five -five with Rush Taunt, Divine Shield. So just looking for a better option. I kind of like That's the Kodo mount here. Yeah, that does let you clear off this Edwin pretty cleanly and also leaves you with a, another Kodo. I think you, you definitely want to slow down the game right now so you can set up an Oracle turn. Yeah, I'd expect to see maybe a Kota Mount just plus a hero power. So that you can set up, you know, Oracle plus Umbral Owl plus Peasant next turn. Yep, we're going for. Can we get it all in? Yeah, no, I, I like this play a lot, I think. Full clear on the board. Tempo Smite. Yeah, kind of the best available option. But also does just get cleared off by what Oash is going to play. He's going to step it, though. Not sure we need to step it here. Yeah. Obviously, looking at the Druid's hand, we're happy stepping it because now it doesn't die. But in general, does it die very often in that position? Yeah, I think personally I would rather have the, the stats on board. Oh, we can actually guess the weight first now if we want to. Get the owl down to zero. I think our hand is pretty short on resources, so drawing into more minions is probably the way to go. One minion. Wow, that is probably the, the absolute best pickup. It just generates a massive board now. Very, very tough to deal with for the rogue with, without scabs. And I mean, a huge swing. Oh, I'm surprised we're not seeing the peasant here. Because, or maybe he's holding back on the owl. I, I would really, really like to see the peasant come down here though for the draw. And yeah, we are. And I mean, it's it's not even that bad if we get scabs, right? <laughs> these these minions all cost one, one and zero, aside from the oracle. So, like, Oash can just <laughs> replay this entire board. Scabs yeah, really isn't doing much here. Yeah, germination is also not exactly the best pickup.
got 16 damage. Yeah, the guff pickup sure. is also quite nice. It means that you don't really have to commit the board into a potential scabs turn. I think. And it also makes your Ivis much better. Yeah, this is this is also quite nice because you get two Ivises. Um, I think one of them will die when it gets bounced back unless he trades with the the Druid of the Reef here, which we might see. Or or the peasant as well. Peasants. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think the Druid of the Reef might have been a bit more valuable just because we have composting now, so we don't super need to to get a ton of draw. We're never running out of cards anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I don't mind the I think the owl play there at the end was also fine, doesn't really change anything. If Scabs comes down. Iron Sail is probably very useful here. Yeah, definitely going to be a good way to deal with this massive board coming down. I fire spell into contraband stash and uh, guarantee a clear. Oh yeah, I didn't even consider the contraband stash, but yeah, that's it's gonna be a, a free full clear. Yeah, and Umbral is sort of going to, I mean, I guess now that there's two fire cells, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, it does somewhat play into that a bit. Hmm, I think I would have liked to have seen a, a hero power there, either for, or probably for mana. Start clearing. Not sure we did a, should have tossed the extortion there. There's a way to clear with only fire sale so we could hold the contraband stash. Yeah, that's true, actually. I think, yeah, that, that is definitely a good point. Maybe just tunnel visioned a little bit too much on, on playing the contraband stash. It's entirely possible. Yeah, I think having that potential second board clear uh, as a backup was was quite valuable. Now the jury's just going to reload here. Yeah, Ivis on on seven mana is not not the worst. I guess you don't have to be too greedy here, and getting two of them is pretty good. It's looking like a secret passage. We just need to fish for answers now. I'm killing Ivas.
Also kill an oracle, but that means wasting the double agent here. Yeah, this this oracle's pretty terrifying though, I think. Yeah, definitely has to die. Well, you have killed off one Ivis, and now, and now you get to face an even bigger Ivis. Uh, if if Oash decides to go for that. Looks like he's going to opt to go wide instead of tall here. Probably play out all the minions in a composting would be my guess. There's no real punish here. Most of crystallized cards, or in terms of answers, are gone. Yeah, and you're definitely looking, I mean, you have two Arbrops in the bottom ten cards of your deck, so I think you're definitely looking for something like that to close out the game. Yeah, Shadow Step is not the pickup you're looking for here. Quant Thief definitely is, though. And Devolving Missiles gets picked up. So if this hits the Ivis, uh, Crystallize is in a pretty good spot. I mean, surely it has to be devolving here. There's no other real way. Yeah, I think we're just going to see it devolving here. Maybe cycle first, yeah. Yeah, I, I think I want to see. I want to see a pep too, to be honest. We really need to kill the Matriarch. Yeah, it looks like he's going to clear off the Matriarch first, and then uh, Devolving so he doesn't give him a, uh, a larger minion off of that. Kind of giving up a card for the, the sake of board presence. Crystallize got the hit they needed. Yeah, and did uh, yeah did clear off that that Ivis nicely. Now a couple options for for Oash here that could go for a Kazakus Golem, like a five Golem, uh, or there is also just the make a giant Ivis play again. I think I prefer Ivis a little bit here. Does let you clear off two minions? I'm looking for a few good mercenaries. We fished for lethal with a five cost golem. It's like we went with ten pot. Okay, so he's gonna play the Ivis at the end of the turn then. And just hold the ten cost? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I like this as well, I think. Okay, what's in the reconnaissance? <laughs> gonna have to be a good one. Undying Disciple is not gonna do it, unfortunately. This game and the match goes to Oash. Yeah, I probably knew that there was a, a giant golem in hand. 
It is also kind of out of resources anyway, so probably not winning that game either way. No. So we'll just uh, go to Rebobson and Oash if Oash needs a quick minute. Sounds good. Yeah, so we now have our two semifinals, Halo <laughs> Halo versus Tomat and Oash versus Rebobson. Already down to the final four. As uh, Halo Halo and Tom Tom Ad hasn't started yet by the looks of it. Uh looks like Halo Halo is doing battle with a friend, so it appears they are in game. Okay. They are in game, I believe. <clears throat> okay. They did ready up, so if we wanna go over there we can as well. Okay. Shall we do that? OS actually there readied is. up right now, so we'll... All right, I'll hit up Rebob. Probably sleeping. Ah, uh, he's around. No, <laughs> it's only nine o'clock for him. Yeah, no. After he was on stream pretty late last night uh, uh, versus Dawn Day. So happy to happy to play in this tournament. So. Yeah, a lot of the, the normal THL times don't line up too well for the, the EU side of the community. So it is nice to have a a bit of an more or a bit of an EU scheduled tourney. Yeah, it looks like I yeah. mean they've got a pretty good turnout today. It is pretty cool to see the EU community show up. Yeah, definitely a lot of names and a lot of people that I know that looked into registering just couldn't make the schedule. So Pretty happy with it, even with some early hiccups going on. Which always Things happens. Happen. Yeah. Yeah. There's never. Yeah, a especially like single day tournaments. There's always lots of uh, things that need to be resolved. Hopefully, yeah, Rebob should be getting on soon, getting the ban in. Rebob will be, oh, Rebob's ready, so uh, OS should be the first to spectate there for our viewers. Yes. The bottom of the screen, and we'll have Rebob at the top. Perfect. Time-wise, this is uh, atypical, or is it going pretty quick for a, from a tournament standpoint for 64 players? We are three hours in, and this is round five. Mm -hmm. Seems quick to me, that's all. Yeah, I'd say it's pretty good. Averaging a little under 40 minutes per match. Really solid. Take a warrior. A little over four minutes, actually. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Bands in yet? Nope, not yet. Okay. So uh, for um, for our viewers out there, we do have a, a salty Saturday. It's that's on tonight. Couple matches there. Uh, I'm not sure if there was a seven o'clock, but I thought there was like a big lineup tonight. But 
don't see who's on the docket other than the two matches, which is um, we got uh, 8, 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, we got Corden uh, versus Neb Knuck for Legacy Series. And at 9 p.m., we got uh, Always Lethal uh, versus Coles, another Legacy ser- uh, Series uh, match. So Solid. Yeah. Except for that Corden guy, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> Wish the, the All right, looks like... Luck. Oh, they do have yep. bands in now, so we're good. So, yeah, they're preparing to battle as we speak. Cool. Oash is a uh, druid is banned with Rebob's warlock band. Go ahead. Yo. <clears throat> Wait for Oash is, Yeah, I think Oash's paladin's really gonna have a tough time here. Uh with two two very bad matchups in the, the Beast Druid and a Quest Roman. Very curious to see how this turns out for those decks. Or for that deck in particular, I should say. Yeah, I would expect. I mean, if either de- if either of Oasha's decks are going to get a win, it's going to be against the Beast Druid. We're rocking and rolling now, so Oash at the bottom of the screen for your viewers again, and then Rebob at yeah. the top. Wash starting with the control warrior versus Bobson's quest shaman. Yeah, we have already seen this matchup uh, once before today, and it was pretty one sided. My Oash already has the Mutanis in hand, so we're almost going to have to play around that now. Yeah, definitely have to be careful about when you complete your quest. <clears throat> yeah, interesting turn here for, for Rebob. I think if he wanted to, he could have opted for for a multicaster. Would have drawn two. Obviously, not the most uh, efficient use of your resources, but your hand isn't great right now. So maybe you just want to cycle through your deck a little bit. You can. Guidance Bloom here now, though. And two pretty solid pickups. And is going to opt to get a multicaster for three cards here. Magic. Yeah. I've heard of it. Very solid. To think that just a few months ago, Quest Shaman's biggest weakness was its lack of draw. Yeah, and now it is one of the the decks that can pull off the fabled four-card multicaster. I mean, pretty consistently as well. As access to those four spell schools. I like this clear 
It's very clean. Lots of setup for a venomous scorpion discover as well. Yeah, I wonder if... Spill. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I wonder if OF will go for the draw here. Shield Slam does seem like a more convenient option. But Rebob just kind of chipping away at that quest every turn, getting two more procs. Like we have to draw the warrior here with the weapon swing, I should say. Yeah, minefield does doesn't make that all that much better. You don't want to minefield that, but really, there aren't any better plays there. You need to dump hand. Yeah, I think I would have liked to maybe just see playing a heavy plate, um, like, instead of trading it. I could see that as well. Yeah, this is also a little interesting by, by Rebob here, because I find that... Overdraft is a really, really strong card to play uh, post Brucon in this matchup because it can just do such an insane amount of damage. It's just going to complete stage two here, get another 3 3 on board. And yeah, yeah, I mean, like we mentioned before, Rebob does have to be a bit careful over the next couple of turns about when he's completing his quest. What now? Probably worth starting with opening the box and seeing what's inside of a scorpion. Yeah, I wonder if we'll see a mutinous here. Just because you, like, a lot of the times against Quashom, your opponent won't even have a single minion in hand. So knowing that you will actually hit something might be an incentive to play it. But maybe Owash is just hoping that Rebob just doesn't play Brukon the turn he uh, finishes quest. Stage dive is pretty solid. You get to pull your your Cargath. Actually, is Cargath in? It's Cargath is a deck. Okay. Yeah, I couldn't remember. Yeah, this is. I think this is the only control warrior we've seen, maybe? Or is it? Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah, I couldn't remember if it was Oash or another person that had Cargath in Warrior. But... No littering! That looks like Rebob setting up for. Brucon next turn. Yeah, it just needs to play one more overload card. Um, I guess it's going to be that Guidance, but he does need to be careful because if he plays Guidance and overloads, he's actually going to mill his Brucon. So it is a little bit awkward. It's likely just Lightning Bloom. Yeah, I... At least for like, I really enjoy um, holding Lightning Bloom for for post quest completion because it's a yeah it's a, it's a really great way to set up a, uh, an overdraft turn. And yeah, not too bad of a Silas turn here. I want to, I mean, 
maybe you want to save it sometimes for oh the zap okay the zapper makes this play a lot easier now yeah this fixes all of Rebob's problems You can actually go for a bit of a pop-off turn here with the charge call. Get to discover a bunch of cards too, and another overdraft, that's quite nice. Two more overdrafts. <laughs> And even get to play the, the Phoenix at the end of the turn, too. So now, you, Very like, solid. In, in two turns, you basically just get to set up a huge OTK potential turn. Um, and actually, no... Okay, now there's the Brawl. <laughs> it's disgusting. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Brawl is quite a nice pickup, but it is still not great if... Uh, anything except the zapper lives. Yeah, and no answer to this Deathwing. So he's effectively at 12 health here. I think... I, I mean, we're probably going to see a, a Fireheart to look for some sort of lethal here. Has to be some sort of lethal on the Rebob side, if this is how the Warriors turn is playing out. Yeah, I'd, I'd definitely expect to be able to find 12 damage once you've completed quest. Well, there's 6 damage. Looks like we're taking the safe route. Yeah, I like this too. You you saw that he had to that Owash had to top deck a brawl to deal with this. Um, okay. I think I would have liked to see the weapon swing in first so that you don't redraw your viper here. They got a swing. Ideally, you get something like Barov. Hmm. Yeah, I'd say that faceless top deck is not ideal. You can faceless the Lawkalar and clear the taunt minions. You can do that. <laughs> That'll make Bull work um, a little bit better? Yeah, I mean, we can see from from Rebob's hand that the Bull work won't, won't be enough. So that, uh, I mean, the Serpent Shrine and the, the Overdraft in hand. Yeah, that's going to close out game one. On to the next. Yeah, I mean, just uh, playing out kind of the way the matchup's supposed to again. Not, not a lot for the Warrior to do most of the time. I will heal. Yeah, now we're going to get to see the Control Warrior versus the Beast Druid. Definitely a, a much, much better matchup for the, the Warrior. Looks like a full toss, except for the score. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> yeah, Scorpid kept on the Warrior side, but the Nature Studies kept on the Druid side. <coughs> Pretty uh, normal stuff here. Wow, 
best in shell snap pick there. Yeah, I, I, was, I was just going to say. That's a very quick decision. Not that it was a not that it was a bad decision or anything. Probably the correct one. Yeah. For power pass. <clears throat> Gidger's more of a sacrifice this turn in a sense. Not much, not much follow-up in behind. Yeah, I think if you're the warrior, you're also not too worried about what it could do. Yeah. There aren't, there's no four mana spells in the deck. I mean, there's. I guess the biggest punish would have been Frostwolf Kennels. But I think he would have seen that the turn before. That is a 10 cost goal, and it's taunt, <laughs> summon a copy. The so Rebomb really just trying to get maximum value out of his cards this game. Yeah. As, as is, uh, I mean, it makes sense against Control Warrior. And the timely uh, Griff coming down. Wow, okay. Wow, and the survival of the fittest. <laughs> Yeah, taking some super greedy options, but <clears throat> I mean, not uh, yeah, not unreasonable. Making every minion your deck plus four plus four is pretty good. Yep. And a loon only cares about the the mana cost, nothing else. So. We're getting the nice little add on. This must be the way. Look at the tiny turtle. Was his original one? <clears throat> Creates a wall. Yeah, holding back on that peasant to kind of wait for an Oracle Balloon turn. He is also getting clo pretty close to that survival of the fittest. It does look like a very easy ranker, though, the warrior. What now? Over and over it. Yeah, seems pretty straightforward here. And this, I mean, this poisonous scorp is actually pretty annoying for the druid here. Must be the way. You want to take the Frostwolf Kennels just so that you can get rid of the Scorpid next turn. Yeah, it also gives you a minion on board for the uh, for the survival of the fittest, but this also likely leaves you with a board. Yeah, I think Rebob's just kind of banking on uh, Oash not expecting the burst from either the, the Arbor Up or the Survival of the Fittest. Sadly, this is all going to get cleared and stolen with Kel'Thuzad. <laughs> yeah, just going to... Take a full board of minions. Definitely going to be pretty tough to come back from this one. 
especially because there's still a poisonous minion on the board, so this, this superior golem really is not going to do much. Neither is the Cyphus. Yeah. There yeah, it is, the control warrior. So far behind as an aggro deck. There are very few swings that are bigger than the swing we just saw, to be fair. Load up the board and and say thank you. Yeah. <laughs> One more game, which is... One of these two players into the finals. Yeah, we're going to have Beast Druid versus Libram Paladin for game three. I will heal the eternal fallen. I will fight with honor. Yeah, generally a pretty good matchup for the Druid, but um, definitely going first as Paladin helps a lot. And especially having Attendant into Hand of the Doll. Just to update our viewers out there, their uh, Halo Halo defeated uh, Tom at 2-1, to one, so now is waiting for the winner out of this match. Congrats to Halo Halo for getting to the finals. Wow, yeah, I, I did say the, the Attendant was pretty nice, but... Raybob did find the perfect answer there with that Druid of the Reef. May the light grant you peace. Yeah, that's that's tough if you're uh Paladin just not having a, a play on two or three really. I mean you had the Knight of Anoima, but it was almost the same as just hero powering. Yeah, that's the thing with Paladin. Either you curve out or you just struggle. We saw earlier what happened when this deck could curve out. And right now, it's not doing that. It's falling behind very quickly. Yeah, and Rebomb setting up a uh, like an absolutely massive turn five for himself with this uh, Umbral Owl and Frost Saber Matriarch sitting in hand. Yeah, even this. Aldor Attendant Hand of a Doll is not going to be great. He does have the Liberum Hope for turn 6, which is quite nice. I'm not sure if they can afford to play it on a minion, though. In the yeah, I don't think they're going to have a minion on board to actually uh, play it on here. gonna have to play the hope. I don't think you, you have time to play this Truth Seeker either, really. Probably just has to be that Liberum of Hope. And Repop just has the answer to it, too. Yeah, you can, you can trade in the Frostwolf Cub and then just play the, the Owl immediately and just push 18 damage face. You can even look for something off of Moonlit Guidance now. That's a, a pretty strong pickup. I don't think I like Ivis that much here. Eh, look like he... Oh my god. Wow, the composting pickup is insane too. Wow, that is yeah. disgusting. Yeah, that that's an absurd topic. 
It's guff just to add more. <clears throat> Um, so Hope will bring Oash back up to 19 health. I don't think that's enough, though, because I have his clears. Um, does, uh, does one I have his clear? Or do you need two? Because if you need two, then you're, uh, you're one off lethal. I think because you have to trade off both cubs and you only have 18. <clears throat> uh, does Drew to the Reef pickup change that? I guess you could Hero Power and then play Ivis. Yeah, I like the Sorter. Raining down. Yeah, I, I mean, not that Rebob is at a huge risk of losing the game at this point, but I do think it. I would have preferred maybe uh, not going for the Druid or the Reef there just to potentially get lethal this turn. I think if he hadn't here powered. I think he could have... And he only traded one. So if he didn't hear a power and he only traded one <clears throat> cub. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, he kind of went in pretty quickly with that. Didn't really think about it. Yeah, I think. But yeah, I think it was just a bit, a bit of an awkward turn. Um. Yeah. I, I do think re. Uh, was... I think re Rebob played it uh, quite well though. Yeah. Right. There's our final. Rebob takes it. Got Rebob versus uh, Halo Halo. And if uh, Rebob wins it, then uh, people can just type uh, or hit the icon rigged. <laughs> yeah, you can all blame me because I told Rebob to sign up yeah. a few days before, mm -hmm. and it's just starting to fill up. So both players are taking a quick, quick break by the looks of it. Nobody's ready up yet. What do you expect bands to be, guys? Out of the, out of the um, we do have so we have Quest Shaman, Handlock, and Face Hunter from Halo Halo, and then Handlock, Quest Shaman, and Beast Druid. I would I would probably expect the Warlock. I definitely expect Halo Halo's Warlock to get banned. Um on Rebob's side. Maybe the warlock could also be could also be the druid. I think we see a double warlock ban. I could be wrong. Yeah, I think the only issue with that for Halo Halo is, is that uh, warlock is Hunter's best matchup, and the other two matchups aren't uh, aren't that great. So it might be tough to get the the hunter through. I think if you're, is it if you're Rebob, you or sorry, yeah, if you're Halo Halo, you know that your Warlock is getting banned for sure. So you could just ban out either the Shaman or the Druid. Those are our options. So both players are ready. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, I'll, some of this this banning, especially in best of three, it does become a, a little bit of a a little bit of a rock paper scissors. 
with, uh, I mean, banning just the objective best deck versus expecting what your opponent's going to ban? Waiting for them to ready up. No bans yet. Or did they ban? Checking now. F5ing as we speak. No bans yet. So still waiting there. Yeah, it looks like they're just readying up. And, uh, I don't think they, yeah, have not gotten into a challenge just yet. They were having <laughs> friends list issues. Oh, yeah. yeah. Repop has too many friends from THL. Mm -hmm. Not too much of a variance between the two decks for Warlock and for Shaman. Shaman, for the British term. <laughs> No difference in the shaman. 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 The Pokemon? The Pokemon? Yeah. The Raven. The Raven version. Uh, right. Maybe Bob's going to watch this VOD later and uh, shake his head. Yep. Proper. Yeah, it looks like they're just getting into challenge now, probably deciding on bans pretty soon. Rebob is uh, banning Donde. Yeah. That checks, right? Yep. Good old teammates. Is Rebop um, much of a wild player, or did you just dabble, started dabbling into it? Uh, he started dabbling in a little while back. Okay. Played in the EU Wild Series. And he hasn't really played wild in NA yet, because he doesn't have much of a collection okay. there. He only has a collection. It's hard to really keep up a collection in both formats on multiple servers. So, we do have bans, by the way. Uh, Halo Halo banned Rebob's Druid, so it wasn't the double lock ban. Rebob did ban the Warlock, of course. Not surprising. Okay. We're just looking for eyeballs. <clears throat> so Halo Halo is going to yep, be first yep. to spectate for our viewers there. At the bottom of the screen with Rebob at the top of the screen. Just gave them the go ahead. Yeah, it's definitely going to be happen. a little tough for this uh, this shaman to get through up for Halo Halo. I think uh, I, I guess I guess Face Hunter versus Quest Shaman is fairly even. So I think there's going to be a lot of a lot of very even matchups, and that's what's going to decide the series.
Weed in for the players still. I give them both a go ahead. Yep. I want to thank all the players that came into the uh, EU Cup as well for participating and uh, hopefully had a, a good time playing. And things seem to go pretty smooth thanks to our boy here, NHLNJFan1. So. AKA I try my best. Marty B. And I want to thank uh, Super Chicken, too, is, uh, for coming out to, to help cast. So And semi-op, because I was away from my my desk for shoveling and getting my my, uh, my child from work. So Yeah, I definitely did so much opping. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, screen, it's it's, so. it's been a uh, it's been a really fun tournament. Yeah, I mean we've gotten to see lots of lots of great matches, lots of interesting decks. It's been fun. Yeah, good to keep something under the five hour mark when it comes to these big tournaments too. So yeah. Oh, we got Warlock versus Hunter first. Well, we're going through these early stages. So you mentioned that there's going to be more um, EU Cups in the future, um, Marty? Yes, we're going to do one at the end of February and one at the end of March as well. Different format, so, or... Same format, sticking around, trying to get people used to this, see where it goes, and uh, see if we can grow a bit of a community. You know, there have been EU players asking for some of this stuff, and we're hoping maybe something more can come out of this. Yeah, I like seeing this uh, this bristleback come down here. It does make it a little awkward for Halo Halo to, to make a play. I expect we'll probably just see um, Neophyte, maybe a Cub, and then go all phase. Uh, yeah, not not exactly a great hand here for Rebob. This altar fire not doing too much. I'm a little surprised not to see the, the touch played here with um with Tamsin being in hand. I imagine he's hoping for just a top deck that you can use alongside Tamsin instead. Yeah, maybe, I mean, top deck Drain Soul would be pretty good here. Um, I mean, the trade in there into the, into the Shima kind of is a bit of a nod to, uh, Soul Rend. But, I mean, as we can see, Rebob doesn't have it, but I think that's why Halo Halo is considering not laying out some of these minions here. gonna say you don't have it yeah i don't mind going for this i think you know rebob only goes down to 16 cards not a huge deal and you're already down to 10 health so might as well put on a bit more pressure if they don't have it and now halo halo is too off lethal Unless he picks something up.
Ray's dead gonna not change the breakpoint there. Super I think, risky. I think he's gonna give him one extra damage. But I don't know if there is an option. I guess Adorable Infestation was the, the only one damage push. Yeah, and Hamson here does not, does also not save Rebob. Uh, I'm starting to think that tap was incorrect on Rebob's end. Yeah, it definitely could have been there. And yeah, quick shot plus the hero power is going to do it. Well done, Green. First game goes to Halo Halo. <laughs> yeah, very quick kinda, game one. Kind of hit the coin flip there on, you know, hitting the good matchup with the Hunter. Now we're going to get to see either the Shaman Mirror or Handlock versus Quest Shaman. Pretty much just going to come down to whoever wins the, the Shaman Mirror wins the series, most likely. With um, I mean, with Handlock being so favored into Quest Shaman. I wonder if Rebob just throws out the Shaman out of the way. Yeah, I can see it. Um, kind of just depends on how you feel about um, order from behind. Do you want to get the worst matchup out of the way and get the, get the series over with? Or would you rather play the good matchup and get a win and maybe <laughs> tilt your opponent a little bit if they're susceptible to that? Yeah, it's like he's going see... for the lock. Yeah, we are going to see the hand lock versus the shaman now. Yeah, nice seeing the, the soul rend here for Rebob. Um, shaman does usually... Uh, play a few minions on board in the early game just to progress their quest. I don't like this cult neophyte here. Sewing down turn three, your shaman is very impactful. Usually they want to complete the first stage of their quest here with a lightning bloom, and this kind of stops that. Yeah, it is a bit inter it is interesting. Um, you you may have wanted to just you could have just let your opponent um, play out their cards if they wanted to into a soul rend turn. And then you could just uh, get them to, or get a lot closer to your Baron Scavengers. But slowing down the quest progression is also pretty important. Might not even see 
the Zaffer get played here, yeah. Yeah, I think this line from Rebob feels a little bit bad because you're missing a couple of hero powers in the early turns, which generally you don't like to do as a handlock. But it did it definitely did help slow down Halo Halo's quest progression, so bit of a give and take there. A very slow turn from Halo Halo, though. Yeah, that is interesting. Yeah, I, th I, I definitely would have expected a little bit more to be played there. And now... I mean, yeah, now... Uh, Revolve gets to develop a pretty decent amount of pressure. I think the, the really impactful turn is going to be next turn, when we could see... Um, like, Tour Guide, Neophyte, Drain Soul, and a Flesh Giant come down and lock out a lot of the potential comeback options. Yeah, Halo Halo has a good answer to you, Netheron, with Canal Slogger. But beyond that... There isn't really all that much to respond to Giants. Yeah, you could even delay a turn here if you want to, and just soar in this and tap, uh, which kind of allows you to set up an even bigger board. Uh, and potentially play two Neophytes, which you would really like to do. Um, yeah, other option here is, is Tamsin Drain Soul, I guess, and then play the Giant. Yeah, the, the reason I like this is because it really allows you to lock out a lot of counterplay from the Shaman here with double Cult Neophyte. And yeah, I mean, it also really... sets up for a one mana scavenger. Yeah, I mean there really isn't any uh, counterplay here, anyways. And the the raised dead top deck is just perfect too. Probably could even play triple neophyte now. Hilariously, <laughs> I mean, I mean, why wouldn't you? You have uh, the BGVM setup. This should definitely close out the game here. I think. This is it. Can't remember how many spells are in multicaster right now. Two? Three? Yeah, I'm not sure how many spells the multicaster has, but it's not like you you can't even play any of the spells right. you get off of multicaster, so yeah. it's just so sad. I mean the the giant and the scavenger alone are, are uh, twenty-eight damage with with the the battle master. So even clearing off one of these neophytes doesn't do anything. I wonder. But yeah, I think yeah, Rebob took a, a really good line here and was able to basically set up a, a an insurmountable position for Halo Halo. I've heard of it. Sure. Just two. Battlemaster comes down and takes care of business. Yeah, and we're going to a game three here. Just the way we like it. All comes down to the shaman here. Yeah, 
the old shaman mirror. Yeah, seen seen uh, two pretty one sided matchups so far, but obviously the shaman mirror will be a little bit closer than that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and it looks like both these players have exactly the same list. Uh, two canal sloggers kind of being that last two card choices. It's chippy. In the mirror matches, it's whoever trips. Brucon first wins, typically. Yeah, it usually comes down to whoever can, you know, draw more of their resources, progress that quest faster. Waiting for the players to, to queue up unless, uh, oh. Yeah. Even Rebob knows. 30 card mirror to decide everything. Okay. Welcome to the final game of the finals. What comes down to this? Spectating. I think the shaman's going to win, though. The shaman oh. will win. Hmm. You guys say that, but there's still a chance that this will end in a tie. Okay. There, there will chance. be a shaman that wins eventually. <laughs> <laughs> it has to. Hey, we'll just make them rock paper scissors if this ends in a tie. Yeah. I'm a little surprised to not see either the Guidance or the Studies played here. I'm not, yeah, I'm not really sure why Halo Halo was holding back with that. What to say? <clears throat> Found it interesting that Rebobs and didn't choose the the zapper instead took the traders. The reason for that one, just more damage, obviously, or spell damage. Um, my guess would be it's because his hand is, doesn't really have any draw in it at the moment, so maybe he's trying to cycle into a multicaster. Because okay. I think as soon as Rebob hits a multicaster, he's in a, a pretty good spot, um, having nature and arcane spells already. Mm -hmm. I, I would imagine that's probably the reasoning behind that. That's my thought as well. Job done. But yeah, on Halo Halo side, he does have the multicaster and just pretty much just needs a nature or fire spell to really get a good amount of value out of that. But yeah, unfortunately so far he has not played any Overload cards, so definitely a good bit behind on his quest progression. He can play <laughs> three Overload cards this turn now, and finish his quest. Probably does make a bit more sense to go for it next turn though, because it lets you multicaster and likely not float mana. And yeah, it doesn't really make a huge difference on whether you played it this turn versus last turn. Not the best pickups off Guidance. Um, 
Wind Fury is definitely good once you get uh, a big charge call off for for some surprise burst, but generally not too great in this matchup. Breakers, quite a nice pickup here. Be solid. It's the multicast. We just can't play it this turn. Perpetual flame coming into hand is pretty good. Perpetual can brick. You won't now, but it could. If it hits, oh no, there's a spell damage. Never mind. It's never gonna brick. So, very good clear. I've heard of it. Just casual mistakes casters make after four hours into a tournament. Yep. Yeah, it does. Uh, it does wear you down a little bit. Uh, Start seeing things. <laughs> I've yeah. I usually. I mean, I, I haven't done too much casting in general, but. Um, usually when I do, it's like for, for single matches or just, you know, an hour or two. So yeah, definitely, uh, definitely feels like a bit of a marathon sometimes. We do it all for you guys. We do it all for the viewers. <laughs> simple, yeah, simple Yeah, not, not that this is, uh, isn't like fun. I mean, not that this is hard work or anything. It's, it's right. quite, quite, it's quite fun, uh, for me at least, but. Yeah, definitely, definitely easier in the earlier matches. Uh, interesting options here. I actually wouldn't mind seeing a Nofin can stop us. Oh, there's a storm. What's it called? Storm strike. Yeah. Yeah, storm strike also pretty good here too. Yeah, we do see the perpetual flame in hand. Um, hard to tell from the spectator plan, but I don't think there's an overdraft in Rebob's hand. So this is perpetual not. flame is not going to be, you know, it's gonna, obviously going to really help clear off the board and progress quest, but there's obviously going to be that severe overload drawback without the overdraft. Mm-hmm. Alnos is pretty nice here, I think. Let's you get the guaranteed uh, uh, perpetual flame clear. Per perpetual scam, as we call it. That we do. Yeah, this uh, perpetual come in, could come down, but... Um, yeah, one thing that's nice is that Rebob will be able to get a couple of draws. For overdraft, um, the Stalnos will likely die and give him another draw, and then he'll he'll still have enough mana to play the overdraft next turn and unlock all his mana. It's actually a one out of three on the quest, so he could actually bloom lightning bolt overdraft if he draws into it and play Brucon next turn. Yeah, only issue really being that he's very low on life right now. 
So one and six to draw it. <clears throat> yeah, and I mean Halo Halo completing quest this turn. Not a not a great look for Rebob. Definitely very far ahead on uh I mean life total and quest progression obviously. Yeah, I just gotta go for the draw here, I think. You can trade the guild know. trader as well. Probably not worth the risk. Charge call coming down, I would assume. Yeah, I mean, steward here seems pretty nice. Yeah. Uh, maybe the second one is Thalnos, though? Oh. I like the oh torrents also pretty appealing to push past the taunt. Scrolls? I'm surprised to not see the second <laughs> storm strike picked up though. <clears throat> Zapper. Just because you could uh I mean you could push uh twelve damage out of hand next turn. Looking for a Colossus here does pick it up, which is quite nice. And I mean, picking it up second is, is pretty good into the potential Dark Moon Rabbit. And Rebob will get to probably go for a charged call here. Yes, positioning on the... Oh, it does get the rabbit. Yeah, the positioning on the taunt did definitely ends up mattering here. Uh oh. Ooh. I think... Yeah, that's, game? that's yeah. gonna do it. Yep. And there you have it. The Shaman won. You heard it right. Hello, we predicted that Shaman won. And guess what, folks? Yeah, I mean, almost as bold as the uh, Tavern Talk predictions we see every week. But... <laughs> exactly, exactly. So congrats to uh, Halo Halo for winning the tournament. And uh, congrats for Rebob to uh, score second place there. So, Yeah, definitely a fun tournament to watch. Any uh, big standout games that you guys got to see while I was uh, otherwise detained? I don't know if you saw it, but Rebob also played a Shaman Mirror, or uh, a Quest Shaman Mirror earlier uh, in the tournament. It was it was definitely quite interesting to watch. I think uh, it was, it was super super close. He and his, his opponent actually sort of missed lethal by by <laughs> and left him at one health and Rebob was able to close it out. Oh my goodness. So that was that was quite a good one. Marty, any uh any specific um matches that you get to view that uh that stuck out in your head today? Honestly I was all over the place. So I couldn't tell you. But there was a lot of stuff going on. I think the highlight was seeing uh, that control warrior play Kel'Thuzad and just swing an entire mm. board on, like, turn six to end the game on the spot. Yeah, some of those control warrior versus thief row games were, were quite quite fun to watch as well. Lots of uh, interesting counterplay on both sides. All right. That pretty much does it for our stream today. Um, not sure if there's any other announcements that we're going to make tonight. Uh, you know, there's a Sunday match as well uh, between Genji and Ron Mexico for the THL at, at 9 p.m. Eastern. Still have an 8 o'clock slot uh, open if anybody's willing to play. 
And again tonight uh, with Salty Saturday, having uh, Corden and Nebuchadnezzar at 8 p.m. And the other one. Other one was... Yeah, always always lethal uh, versus Coles. So at 9 p.m. right after that. On behalf of uh, our casting crew and our tournament organizer, Marty B. and Super Chicken, thank you again so much for uh, for doing so much for the for the THL. I want, I, I could say league now. I, I always work THL in there <laughs> instead of league, but so but you guys do so much for the league and we appreciate you. So. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Again, thanks to Halo Halo. Uh, or congrats to Halo Halo for, for winning. And uh, contact Marty B for your 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 uh, loot. Okay? Check. All right. Thanks, guys. Take thanks care. Everybody. We'll see you. Yeah, thanks for watching, everyone.